On tonight's program, I'm not necessarily taking a victory lap. I just thought it'd be a good opportunity here for us to go ahead and have a refresher course on some things I've said to you before because it matters where you get your news. And if you'll all remember here, um, for the past couple of years, I've been telling you exactly how it was going to go down with certain people and it's broken exactly the way that I said it was. And I found that the recent Met Gala, and if you don't know what it is, just understand it's a party where celebrities get together and do various things and whatnot and try to be seen and things like that so it's like the oscars without an award so in any case a bunch of them showed up for that and they wanted to be seen so that's cool and everything but it did present an opportunity to review some of the things i've told you because there were some individuals who were there in particular who upheld everything that i have said and everything i have uh, predicted the entire time here everything i've said and everything that i predicted now First and foremost, I want to just go into a couple of basics here just to get this out of the way. I might as well go ahead and start from the top because uh, where else would you start from here? What you had was Kim Kardashian. She showed up. She was there. And lo and behold, she was there with uh, old Pete Davidson. And you'll all remember that I called this before anybody else. I said, there's no way in this side of the Southwest hell that that's going to last. Don't worry about it. Some folks were arguing with some people. She's found happiness. Jason, you wrong. She found happiness. I said, watch her drop him because he ain't Kanye. And unless he figures out a way to go from 2 million to 20 million, he ain't going to last. Well, sure enough, he didn't. But I found this of the pictures to be the most telling and the most revealing. That's right. White pookie. I found this of the pictures to be the most revealing because... Now, we're not sure what sequence the pictures were taken in necessarily, but I will tell you, this is the only picture that you have that looks like this one, where Kim Kardashian is directly uh, referencing or looking at Pete Davidson. This is the only one you saw like that. Everything else you saw looked like this right here. And folks, you ain't stupid and you ain't dumb. You recognize body language. One of these men we have confirmed Kim has been up under physically. The other one, we ain't so sure. But I am saying that you know what the hell you seeing on this screen right here. Pete looks like the valet intruding on a conversation between Kim and Usher. Jason, that's just one picture. All right, here's another one for you. Yeah. Take a look at her eyes. You take a look at that body language. Take a look at her. She's damn near leaning forward at Usher. She, if you think this is all forward facing body language, fully engaging, you know who ain't being fully engaged? Oh, Pete. She looked at him for a moment. Take a look at that. She's holding the hand up and you notice he stopped talking. Wonder what she was telling him don't do. So after that, it was all Usher. Take a look at her face. You see that smile? You don't see a smile here, do you? You see that smile on her face? You see that? You see those eyes? Her eyes are directly looking at his eyes. You know what I see here? I see a chick who thinks she's found a replacement. She might as well have sat there and said, "Uh, Usher, now remind me one more time of how much of your publishing you own. Remind me one more time about how much publishing you own. And old Pete is over there looking like a fifth wheel. Damn a third wheel. Damn a third wheel. Kim is trying to figure out how to get the hell off this market. She's trying to get somebody else to take her off the market. And you know, there's a rumor that Usher got herpes. I guess Kim said, well, I'll catch him. If I can catch him in between outbreaks, we'll make this work. If I can live with Bruce Jenner, I'll catch you in between outbreaks. But you take a look at Pete. Dude, take a hint. Catch a clue. Your time is over. She knows she's already given you a shot. You're a big ass juvenile delinquent. You're not going anywhere. She's like, okay, can a real man step in here? Can a real man step in here? Somebody in the chat room said, let it burn. Well, all right. But in any case, yeah, Kim said, I'm over the age of 40. I need somebody to get me the hell up out of here. I'm over the age of 40. I need a rescue plan. 
Can we get gone? Can y'all get me up out of here? So she's, uh, keep your eye on this one in particular. Keep your eye on it because if anybody has a history of being able to go back through pictures and see her dating history where she was making it very clear to a man that she was uh, interested in getting picked up, yeah, she's the one. I'd like to tell you that that was it, but that wasn't. A brief update on somebody else here. Oh, well, what do you know? Giselle Bunchen. Now, in case you all were wondering, I may, I went back to the archives just to make sure about that because there will be some people, some desperate individuals who will be so desperate and shameless to try to defend this. What they'll try to do instead is say, well, Jason, you ain't right about this. Well, you know, everybody didn't come with their spouses or whatever. Well, you know what? Giselle, when she came in 2019, she had her husband with her. When she came in 2019, she had her husband with her. When she showed up in 2023, she still wanted to show up. Uh, no husband. Will you please tell me what in the world qualifies her to be there without Tom? So she still wants to have access to these places, access to these venues, access to this attention. She still wants it. Even though she no longer qualifies. So she had to go stag for you young folks out there. Look it up. She had to go by herself. That's an old term, but yeah, she had to go stag to this one. And as I was showing you here before, she wasn't the only one. It was a bunch of them had to run stag to the event. Some of them deserved to do so. Hello, Doja Cat. Haven't able to find her dude to pick her up off of the market. Then there were some others who went well beyond that. Oh, look, Halle Bailey. Fresh off of getting naked with her rump up in the air on national TV. With some dude bicycling her. Well, and when she showed up at the event, well, the good news is she didn't show up alone. The bad news is, uh, on your screen is the bad news. 23 years old, this is the best she could do. 23 years old, this is the best she could do. This is a harbinger of the future and you know it. Don't even try to lie, you know it. Oh, take a look here. Hey, I recognize you. That's Black Batman. I mean, P. Diddy. That's Liberace Batman. I recognize him. I also recognize the person next to him. Is that young Miami? Didn't they just, didn't they just announce that they were no longer together a week or two ago? Didn't they just announce that? Didn't they just announce that? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Didn't they just announce that they weren't together anymore? I'd be surprised. I would be surprised here. No, you know why? Because she was like, hey, I'm not trying to be forgotten. I'm not trying to be forgotten. I don't blame her. I don't blame her, but by the way, they weren't holding hands. They were just holding pinkies. They were not holding hands. They were just holding pinkies. Yeah, yeah, I know. She, she recently said that she was bisexual. Yeah, what she's saying is, hey, if, did, everybody knows that the P. Diddy is all downhill. You saw what happened to Laurie Harvey. After P. Diddy, it's all downhill. Who's going to come take her off the market? Don't y'all realize that every time you turn around, these folks are all telling you they got fluid sexuality? It's like, yeah, it's, I'm looking, they're looking for a benefactor. They're looking for somebody who's going to pay the damn bills. They are open to whoever the hell it is. And after P. Diddy has been on your sexual resume, you better be ready for whatever the hell you can get. So Young Miami is letting it be known, hey, whoever's willing to take me off the damn market, here we go. Here we go. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Well, actually, I do kind of blame you. You should do better than that. You should do better than that. This should be an opportunity for you to go ahead and clean that up at least. This should be an opportunity for you to go ahead and clean that up at least if you can.
Brief aside here. I got my names on my notes for it. Brief aside. Y'all that have a t-shirt on that says, I'm not Chloe. Let me give you a little bit of career advice, Hallie. This would be a perfect time for you to get a t-shirt that says, I'm not Chloe. This would be a great time for you to do that. If you like, I can get those made up for you. As you can see, there are certain folks out there who are looking to get their ticket on the last train leaving. Some of them are looking to see if they can get a repeat ticket on the last train leaving. It's getting rough out here. It's been rough out here. It's exactly what the hell I told you it was out here. Now, there are some folks who know how to stunt because those who had a husband to show up with brought a husband to show up with. Oh, everybody didn't come stag now. Not only did Serena come with her husband, she came to say she's pregnant again. So everybody didn't come stag is what I'm trying to get across to you. Everybody didn't show up that way. Some of the folks showed up and said, oh, I'm not like the rest of you. That was a good thing there too, because boy, I'm telling you, this was a night to confirm so much of what I said. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then one picture is worth a thousand confirmations. If you'll all remember, did I call it or did I call it? Now, Lala Anthony was hosting the event, which makes a whole lot of sense. It wasn't like she had anybody to go with. She got plenty of leftover time. But she was basically the person with the microphone asking people questions. And lo and behold, she had enough time left over to sit here and go chit chat with Kim. That's cool. Kim didn't bring anybody either. Exactly what I called. Exactly what I said. People, is this confirmation that the game is over or is it? If Jason called it and they missed the last train leaving, give me the train emoji in the chat room and hit the likes button for me. It's over 2,000 people and we're only 12 minutes in. I know some folks got 200,000 subscribers and couldn't get 400 people to show up for their live stream today. By the way, two hours later and couldn't get 400 people to tune into the live stream. 100,000 subscribers, so... Hey, folks actually dig what we do here. It's not my fault that they would rather hear me than see you. But in any case, hit the likes button for me or I'm just going to figure we got a bunch of Kim Kardashian lovers out there and I'm not going to get any traction. So we'll call it what it is. We'll call it what it is. If I don't see the likes go up, I figure the haters are winning. We'll just call it a night. We'll just call it a night. As I said here, folks, I told you over a year ago, La La was done. There were a bunch of idiots, clowns, and jackasses out here trying to talk about, oh, that wasn't the case. There were a bunch of them out here, I mean, in a criminal amount of denial. They were in a criminal amount of denial. And it's not so much they were in denial, it's that when you've gotten used to lying so much, then you just go ahead and lie about every damn thing. But this doesn't serve anyone. All the folks who were sitting up here talking about what La La was going to do and she was going to bounce back and everything was going to be okay. None of those people are here to apologize to her for misleading her, for gaslighting her. Which is why I said the whole time. When she said she didn't have any options, she meant that. She meant that. And the only fellas talking about what they love about La La aren't going to do anything for you, for her, because you both want something. You guys want sex with her. Well, guess what? She wants something too. She wants someone to finance her lifestyle. And when she presents you with that bill, you ain't going to want to pay it. There's only one man who is willing to pay that bill for Lala Anthony. His name is Carmelo Anthony. She divorced the only man who would pay that bill. 
he gone. Kim Kardashian, you can see her right now. Oh boy, ain't it sad. She is just so openly campaigning, so openly hoping for somebody. She looking for somebody, not you, uh, sir. Would you be interested? Uh, Pete, uh, calm down. Hello, Usher. Hi. You tell me. They trying to get taken off the damn market right now, which is what I warned you before. They are in the discount bin. They are in the discount bin. And she's like, hey, I need a lifeline. Can you throw me one? And guess what? Oh, Lala is hoping for one either. Here's the problem. It ain't coming. So this picture right here tells you everything. What happens to the old Instagram chicks who can't get on anymore? What happens to the old Instagram chicks who can't find a sponsor? What happens to them? When their implants and their cellulite reduction and green tea or whatever the hell else they're hawking, what happens to them when the last train leaves? You're looking on your screen. They end up hanging out with each other like a bunch of little old ladies. Because in reality, <clears throat> that's what you are. Oh, they're not going to like it. You're not going to like it when I say this here tonight because I'm going to upset a whole bunch of people. I'm going to upset a whole bunch of folks. But it's the truth. It's the damn truth. You've aged out. You don't have that leverage that you used to have anymore. Lala is 40 years old now. Kim Kardashian is 42 years old now. The last train has left. You can't well wish your way through this. The last train has left. You are 40, famous, and finished. Because the cost would be too damn high compared to what the fella's going to get. The cost is too damn high. You're 40, you're done. Jason, you're hurting feelings tonight. Well, get ready. I'm, I'm going to stomp on some more. But before you all sit up here and say anything, folks, yes, I already know. No, I did not come with receipts. I came with invoices. I did not come with receipts. I came with invoices. So, yes, I'm, I'm very, very well aware of which, of another issue that you want me to discuss. I'm very, very well aware of that. Because I know you want me to get off into it and things, and I'm, I'm going to do that for you here. Case in point, well, then why don't I just go ahead and jump off into that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Ebony K. Williams. Some people don't know when to shut the hell up and go home. Some folks don't know when to shut up and go home. This is a woman who made some ridiculous comments that while there may have been some truth to them, her motives behind them are bad because they're selfish and self-serving. But in reality, this actually dovetails rather well off of the subject we're discussing here tonight. It actually dovetails off of it really good. What I want to do here, and I know this is going to seem a little disjointed, but hang with me here. I know this is going to seem a little disjointed, but hang with me. What I want to do is I want to start from the most recent and go backwards to the original offense. There's a reason for this. She was on the Breakfast Club here. Uh, well, they, they aired her program on the Breakfast Club yesterday. Now, whether or not it was actually done yesterday or not, I'm not sure. It probably wasn't, but they aired it yesterday. And she was up there trying to explain away and explain herself and so on and so forth. And, you know, she was, she was talking as much as she could here. She made a few comments I wanted to go over, so hopefully YouTube does not strike me too badly on this. 
But she had a few things she wanted to say. She was over talking and every damn thing else. This picture right here on your screen, this frame right here really says it all. It really, really does. But the most damning thing was actually something that people did not say anything about from her original interview. And we're going to get to that because the most damning thing was in her original interview with Ilyana Van Zandt. But here she's talking about, well, she's talking about where is he at? I'll let her tell you. Father, who was a leader in law. Do you think for one second I'm about to push back on anything you just offered in that statement? You can't. Right. right. So, 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 can. so I cannot. And so what I'm telling you is what you are applying now is not the facts as they were given to me. The, Ayala did not ask me, Ebony, would you date a bus driver that also had a real estate portfolio? Mm. Ayala did not ask me. Hold on now. Uh, Ebony, would you date a bus driver that also has um, a, a litany of franchises? Because you and your wife just bought five, right? Six. Chris, six, six, six crystals? Crystals? Yeah, mm, exactly. crystal burgers. Okay. Mm-hmm. She didn't ask. That was not the framing of the question, Envy. Yep. Had that been the framing of the question, I would have said, Dr. Vons, where the fuck he at? So- okay. First of all, some, some type of, some type of classy woman you are. First of all, she is on the biggest stage she's ever been on. And, totally classless that's the first thing but she is oblivious to it because she's told herself that she's got this elevated value we're gonna get to where she where the misnomer is and the misconception is well by the way that's the first thing she says without actually acknowledging the fact that by the way even if such a man was available are you eligible for him do you qualify for him that's the first thing. So this is who the Grio, Byron Allen, I think he bought the Grio. And this, this is who, her and Mark Lamont Hill. This is who they brought in for that. That's who they brought in for it. So she's making headlines for all the wrong damn things. Now, later on in the interview here, she says that she's here to help. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Because she's here to help us. Great. Back on the working class and the people that were in them comments more than it was the man you're looking for. So let's address it, Weezy. I, I'm glad you brought that up because that is the turn that I took. So at this point, who gives a fuck about who Ebony K. Williams is dating? Let's throw that over to the cycles. So it's, it's, a, it's irrelevant. That's your preference. And I agree. Not, and, 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 Interesting. So then she says, who cares about who I'm dating? Well, that's very interesting that she would want to put that to the side, don't you think? Why is she cursing? Because small-minded individuals think that they can emphasize a point by doing that. They don't understand that there's a time and place to do that. So, yeah, by the way, uh, baby, you at this point right now, you should be angling for a sailor, not a bus driver. Who gives a fuck, right? So now, let's talk about my... By the way, yeah, she drops another F-bomb within a couple of seconds because this is the classy kind of gal she is. Represents a man well. Couldn't you imagine her representing a CEO? Represents a man very well, doesn't she? Point. Who gives a fuck about who Ebony K. Williams is dating? Let's throw that over to the side because it's, it's, it's irrelevant. That's your preference. And I agree. Not, and and, and right. who gives a fuck, right? So now, let's talk about my real work in this world the work God has called me to do, which is to always sit in a posture of elevating, advancing, and offering options to black Americans. Oh, so she's on a mission from God. She's on a mission from God and God has given her the mission of elevating black people. Maybe you can start with elevating the vocabulary. Perhaps you can do that. She's here to show that she's going to elevate black people and an ambitious goal. Well, she was doing pretty good there for a minute, or at least she seemed to think she was. And then DJ Envy comes along and decides to go ahead and blow things up for her. Well, she kind of blew it up for herself. So, so when you start talking about all this, and, and I read the comments just like you did because I wanted to prepare myself when you came up here to, to understand what people were mad about yeah. and what, understand what people were upset about. So when you're talking about all this, this brother this and, and the black man this and the white supremacy this and this, that and mm-hmm. the other, 
that's all to the side of how you felt about that quote unquote average job, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and I'll be honest with you, right? And one of the comments that I said, and, and and maybe I'm not sure, right? The guy was like, he was like, you talk about all this about lifting a brother up and lifting lifting this up and white supremacy and, and what you do for our people. And then the first thing the brother said was, but your fiance was white. And I'm sitting there like, how how do you talk about how much you uplifting and how much you're going for black people, but that's not necessarily what you're even looking for. Well, first of all, Paging I, Dr. Umar, damn. Well, no, that, that's well, the, that's no, the let's, let's address and, and it. And I'm let's wrong, not. Hmm. That's not even what you're looking for. By the way, in case you were wondering, yeah. Hmm. Ebony is here to discuss black her uplifting black people and to argue for, I suppose, black solidarity. But needless to say, black solidarity apparently only extends to when she needs a bailout. But if she actually has the option, she doesn't really, uh, her daily life doesn't really show that type of affinity. By the way, so DJ Envy put it out there. I'd like to tell you that she addressed the issue. I'd like to tell you that she did but she didn't. Black people, but that's not necessarily what you're even looking for. Well, first of all, paging Dr. Umar. Damn. Well, no, that, that's well, the, that's no the let's, let's address said, it. And, and, and let's wrong, not, wrong, let's, not asking. Asking. let's not skip a beat. Mm-hmm. So, I would love to know how you envy know what I'm looking for because we never don't. had the conversation. I so, don't know. But, but, uh, how do we know what you're looking for, um, ma'am? We can see what you got. That was your white fiance. At least he was. How do you know what I'm looking for? I see what you brought home. I see what you allowed to propose to marry you. It'd be different if this was just the layup. That would be bad enough if you were just sexually globe trotting, because we all know what that does for your resume. But by the way, we can see what you got there. If you all agree that this represents what she wanted because you can see what she let, uh, uh, let, uh, let sit up here and propose to her. Give me the diamond emoji in the chat room and hit the likes for me. My likes are a little bit low, so I'm going to wrap things up here in a minute. I'm going to wrap it up here in a minute. But if you all agree that, how do you know what she wanted? This is what she wanted. Give me the diamond emoji in the chat room if this is what she wanted. She was, I mean, she was like, I'm going to cash in all this light skin goodness. I'm cashing it in right here, right now. And then I'm going to try to double back and wag my finger at you Negroes. Because light skin privilege. So it ain't very hard to see what you wanted, ma'am. It ain't very hard to see what you wanted. Cause that's what you were after. Now she was saying a whole lot and saying a whole lot of nothing. But the issue here is that you're trying to talk big about this. And the problem is that she's speaking about how people need to elevate themselves. And it's about doing the best that they can and that your job may not define you, but it's mediocre. The work is mediocre. Even if you aren't, here's the problem. Most women are basic. Not just average. You all need to update your lexicons. Not just average, but basic. Use a basic broad. And for so many women who are basic to go on national forums like the Breakfast Club yelling that they are demanding excellence when they are not excellent at anything other than arguing, that's the problem. And that's a hard pill to swallow. But it's the truth. To make matters worse here, some folks should have just gone ahead and left things alone. They didn't do so. I would uh, play for you. I wanted to play for you the video here. When she was, uh, she went to her Twitter after she made her original comments. And I'm telling you, boy, she went there to go and play the pro black card. And yes, this dovetails off of what I'm talking about here tonight. She goes there to go play the pro-black card. 
That's how she was going to out black the rest of us. See, she thinks she's an attorney and she thinks that she is so smart. She thinks she's smarter than the rest of us. She thinks she's slicker than the rest of us. She thinks she's so much more sly and cunning than the rest of us. Well, this is what she had to say to save herself. So out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of you. Oh. Well, you see, she was just trying to help us, don't you see? And you're just a little too dense to recognize or realize that she was just trying to help here. So maybe if you weren't so dumb and if you weren't so dense, then you would have recognized that. Okay. So glad we got that together. By the way, you would make a wonderful wife, wouldn't you? By the way, this woman would make a charming, wouldn't a man like to come home to this damn me Conan the Barbarian battle axe every day? Wouldn't a man like to go out there and go conquer the world and then have to come home and conquer this broad? Yeah. So out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable gold diggers and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Well, that's interesting. Black, I suspect, I suspect you're the same men who brought home C's and D's. Well, I could imagine you bringing home something else. If you're going to wag your finger at black people, at black men in particular, uh, I could imagine you, yeah, you don't think you have a credibility problem? I could imagine bringing home something other than a C or D report card. I could imagine doing something like that. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. All right, let me go ahead and just touch on this real quick here. I love and believe in the excellence of black men. Bull crap. And I've got audio that proves it. She has no special affinity whatsoever for black men. She is trying to get her a ticket on the last train leaving. So far, her battle axe attitude has prevented that from occurring. But what she just said was an absolute oozing, dripping lie. It was putrid. It was smelly. It was disgusting. She has no special affinity for black men. She's just looking for somebody to... Rate, get, give her the type of reward that she tells herself she's supposed to be getting. And I've got the proof of it from her own lips. I have the proof of it. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. So I'm going to say one more time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. But could it be that black America... Okay... Now, did y'all catch that one? Let me go ahead and turn the thing back on here. Did you all, am I the only one who heard that? Let me go ahead and rewind that one more time. Bus, my mother Gloria drove one for years. No expectations. So I'm going to say one more time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. My mother, Gloria. She didn't say Mrs. Williams. She said, my mother, Gloria. Folks, supposedly her family is from Louisiana. I was born and raised on the soil. Uh, even at my age today, I would be picking up my newly whitened teeth off the damn floor if I said something like that. 
even today, if my parents didn't smack me, my siblings would have. What in the hell? Gloria, you are in front of a national and international audience and you just called your mother Gloria? And you think that we all don't see the dripping, oozing venom just pouring out of you? Is there anyone in anything you, in your personal life you don't despise? And you can't even contain it. By the way, folks, if you think I'm being uh, facetious or if you think I'm being excessive, I got receipts on that too. That, oh, no, 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 this doesn't stop at her mom and she's got plenty of venom for everybody else too. But by the way, I want you to hear that she liked to introduce us to her mom, Gloria, not Miss Williams, Gloria. Now, if this is how she feels about her mother, how in the hell do you think she feels about you as a black man? And this is how she feels about her mother. Hello, Gloria. But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. So she tries to use the language of black empowerment. This woman is going to educate us and lecture us about what is white supremacy. Think this over for a few moments. This is what happens when a woman with a degree, when that damn thing goes to her head. This is what happens when you have a woman with a degree and it shoots straight to her head like a migraine. She is completely, she's not oblivious to the reality because she doesn't want to, remember she told GJ Envy, let's forget about who Ebony dates and who Ebony sleeps with. Yes, yeah, she wants to move that out the way because you see, when you start checking the paperwork, the credentials come back all kinds of dirty. The credentials come back all kinds of dirty. That's the problem. So she doesn't actually have the ability to address black people, but she wants to wag her finger at black folk because, yeah, Zaddy didn't give her that exit strategy that she was hoping for. So, yeah, the paperwork is looking real damn raggedy. It's looking real damn raggedy. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America. No, average is not and will never be good enough for me. Uh, let me back that up one more time and give us a visual a lot more suited to what she's saying. Permanent American us. Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America. No, average is not and will never be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. I will let the visuals on your screen speak for her. I will let the visuals on the screen speak for her. Now, folks, I could let the matter go. I could let it go, but oh, you know that that ain't going to happen. You know it's not going to happen. So let's take us back to the beginning. Let's take us back to the source. When this, And I'm going to bring this back around here to the Met Gala here shortly. And the tragedy of Lala and KK. We're going to come back to that here in a moment, but... Ebony, the, the original problem started here with this interview. She did an interview here for the Griot with Ilyana Van Zandt. And Dr. Van Zandt is one of the few competent individuals to talk to black women that I would talk to out there. Even though she came up, she was popularized from Oprah. She's actually got a lot more sensibility and balance. But there, everybody talks about the bus driver thing. Y'all, there were a number of out-of-line comments that Ebony Williams made 
when she talked to Ilyana. There were a number of out of line comments that nobody said anything about. So what I'm going to do here tonight is I'm going to go ahead and give you a refresher on this because nobody talked about some of these other things she said. Let's go ahead and get to Ilyana when Ilyana says what the problem is with the women today. First of all, I think we've lost our grace. We, we move in such a harsh and hard way. Grace, compassion, um, nurturing, nourishing, um, elegance. How about majesty? How about divinity? How about holiness? This is not a language you hear coming out of most women's mouths, but they'll talk about being a boss, being a diva, being, you know, in charge. And see of us, are either not seated in our throne as queens or we're in the throne and the crown is crooked. Hmm. So far, I agree with everything Ilyana's got to say. Miss Williams could learn a thing or two. She could learn a thing or two. Well, maybe you should stop there. Quit while you're ahead and just let Ilyana sit here and spit the game. No, Ebony's not going to do that because Ebony thinks she's brilliant. Ebony thinks she's smarter than everybody else. So Ebony decides to throw this little gem at us. Say I was triggered, I was a hit dog, and I hollered to, to the entire production team to, to get you here today. Because I, I actually think you're right. I think you're right, Ayanla. I do think um, that, I'll just speak for myself vulnerably, uh, when I think of a masculine um posture and what I would expect a man to do in my life, uh, two things come top of mind and they are provide and they are protect. And when my lived experience, um, and I, I think I'm still relatively young, I guess, but I'm 40 in, in, in September. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had some, some relationships. This is criminally out of touch with reality. She literally just sat here and said, I think I'm relatively young. I'm 40. This is completely out of touch with reality. There's no such thing as a young 40 year old. But this is some of the crazy talk that gets circulated among females today. They're up here telling each other they're evergreen. It don't matter. She's 40 years old. Baby, you've aged out. But this tells you that in her mind, all of that degree chasing and career chasing and all that stuff that she was doing in her mind, there wasn't a problem with it, that she was increasing her value and that the world froze at a standstill in suspended animation, waiting for her to decide when she was ready to go down to the get a man store. And go yank one off the shelf. This is delusion. This is absolute delusion. You thought the size 22 females talking about they were thick, not fat was the worst you were going to hear. Ridiculous. So you just heard her sit here and tell you, I think I'm relatively young at 40. And when my lived experience, um, and I, I think I'm still relatively young, I guess, but I'm 40 in, in, in September. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had some, some relationships and I've yet to find a man who has shown, I mean, this includes even my father who was absent. I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me consistently ever. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm -hmm. I have taken on the reins to protect and provide for myself because what I'm not going to do, mm -hmm. Ayanla, is be without. So remember what I told you all here before about Gloria. Nobody's gone over this with you all. No one has done this and gone into the details and in the woods like I have here. Yeah, she got smoke from mom and for dad. She is a fireball of hostility. Um, and I, I think I'm still relatively young, I guess, but I'm 40 in, in, in September. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had some, some relationships and I've yet to find a man who has shown, I mean, this includes even my father who was absent. I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me. 
Okay, let me go ahead and say something right now. Your mama, I'm not going to call her Gloria. I'll call her Miss Williams. I'll call her your mother. Let me just explain something to you right now, Ebony. And can I just say this in no uncertain terms? Ladies, gentlemen, can I just say it like it is? Your mama drove the bus. Fellas, will you tell me, when was the last time you met a feminine female bus driver? I've been on buses. I have yet to see a feminine female bus driver. Will someone here tell me when's the last time you saw a feminine female bus driver? Because I'm thinking to myself right now, when's the last time I ever saw that? When? In the chat room, Natasha, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll need to see some pictures or something, baby. This is, I'm not holding you out for, you know, particular torment, but I'm just saying, eh, well, well, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. I have yet to see it. So maybe you're just gracing us tonight in between your modeling career or, or baking cookies for Betty Crocker. I don't know, but I have yet to see a, a feminine dainty, a dainty female bus driver. I have yet to see it. Never. So getting back to the point, my point here is that good old uh, Ebony, baby, look here. Your mama drove the bus. My father was absent. Your father got a bus driver pregnant. You're 40. That means what? 1977? Um, okay, that was terrible. That was awful. 1983. Nineteen eighty three. Yo, we ain't even talking about the disco era no more. We talking about the eighties, the Transformers GI Joe era. Yo, daddy got your mama pregnant during the Reagan administration. Okay, Natasha, you can email them to me if you want to. I'll let everybody know whether or not it's worth seeing. Yeah, you can email them to me, Natasha. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. If I can show them to everybody, if I can post them up on the screen, sure. I'll say, hey, everybody, this is Natasha, the bus driver. So she's she is uh, feminine and everything else. So go ahead and email it to me. But the bottom line here is back in the 80s. We're talking about the 80s. We're not talking about the 70s, the 80s. Dude was like, oh, hell no. Yeah, the, the, the Cabbage Patch years. The Cabbage Patch kids years. My father was absent. Are you sure that the bus driver mama didn't run him off? Are you certain? Are you certain? Talk about a complete and utter lack of self-awareness. I'm just putting this in context for you all. How many of you have been on a Greyhound? I have. How many of you had a female Greyhound bus driver? I have. How many of you thought the bus driver was going to punch you out? I did. Let me tell you, them some rough little broads. While she's sitting here telling us, about what her father didn't do for her mother, and now here she is grown, complaining and whining about what the men aren't doing for her. With a list of complaints. So she can go smack mom and say, ooh hell, you set me up for failure. Some, some relationships, and I've yet to find a man who has shown, I mean this includes even my father who was absent. I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me consistently ever. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm -hmm. I have taken on the reins to protect and provide for myself. Cause what I'm not going to do, Ayanla, is be without baby. It's not happening. Be without what? So that be would without be without protection, be, be without protection okay. and be okay. without the necessities of life. Okay. So, so be without protection. What the hell is protecting you? What the hell is, pro I'm not going to be without protection, but protection of what? Who was protecting you? What the hell? I'm not going to be without, but you are. 
but you are. And y'all saw Ilyana called it, but you're not going to do without what? Because you're certainly doing without a man. Well, I'm the things in life. You know what? This is like a fella saying, she's, a, she's talking about if, if no man's going to do it, protect and provide for me, I'm going to protect and provide for myself. This is like a male saying, well, nobody will baby, baby me and pamper me. So that's why I dress like Lil Nas X. Because I need somebody to baby me and pamper me. And if ain't nobody going to baby me and pamper me, I'll baby and pamper myself. Grow the hell up. Oh, but 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 I say that with an invitation, Ayanla, check me. Show me the error of my ways. Tell me how I might be missing it. Because I just explained how you're missing it. So basically, that was a bad look. That was a bad look. Because I might be. You are. I, too, am an alpha woman. So I understand what that means. And I tell people all the time, I was a horrible mother. I was a horrible mother. I was a great father. <laughs> and this is the reason that the Ilyana Van Zants of the world, Ilyana Van Zants of the world. I keep missing that last L on there, but this is why the Ilyanas of the world are able to course correct and do what they do. Do you know this? Ebony, every time Ebony speaks, Ebony's talking about what the world owes her. Ain't nothing wrong. I had to do it myself because y'all wouldn't do it for me. Ilyanla opens her mouth and immediately starts taking accountability. And first word she says is, I was a terrible mother. Words you ain't going to hear the most down and dirty, ignorant ass project, scummy ass ghetto hood rat tell you. She'll be done kill three kids and throw them in the freezer and tell you she was a fantastic mother. And so will the rest of the females she meets, including outside the housing project. They'll all sit there and co-sign her. But the first words out of her mouth is, I was a terrible mother. I was a good father, but for that motherhood thing, yeah, nah. And dudes wasn't feeling it. So she's acknowledging, yeah, ain't no man going to feel that. <laughs> I was a horrible mother mm. because I had never been mothered. So I didn't know how to affirm, mm -hmm. how to nurture, how to nourish, how to um, guide. I knew how to direct, how to demand, how to discipline. And like you said, provide mm -hmm. and protect. Those are masculine energies. And the, the distinction here is men build, women create. So we know how to hmm. build. We know how to get to the external and get the work done and drive and push and do it, do it, do it. We don't know how to be still, create it, and allow it to come to us. And be still and create it. That means for a man to do what a man going to do. When she says be still, that doesn't mean be still and wait for the supernatural. That means be still, shut the hell up, and a man will take care of it. A man isn't going to challenge you to protect and provide for you. You sit over there looking helpless, a man will step in. You sit over there with your tool belt and your PVC piping and your contractor's license with your Timberland boots on, and a man's going to just stand back. And I learned that when I lost everything. I learned how to create. Did you hear that? I learned that when I lost everything. And this is the crux of the problem. If the only time that you will listen, if the only time that you will course correct, if the only time that you will stop self-destructing is after you've blown yourself up, how is that worth a man's time to come in and pick up somebody who's lost everything? Just listen to the logic here. How is it worth a man's energy and efforts to come here and pick up all the thousands of blown apart pieces of a chick who sat here and fought tooth and nail to blow herself to smithereens? How is that worth a man's time? How the hell is that? Because that's not loving a man. That's exploiting one. But you won't listen until after you have absolutely no choice. You won't listen until you are down, out, and dead. With a bunch of other chicks standing around you, co-signing and cheering for you. 
So I want you all to understand this actually isn't a good thing, Ilyan just said. That's actually a bad thing. Because you are now a man's last option. Not last best option. You the last damn one. Because I had already built and it all crumbled. The house, the husband, the job, the contracts, the professional career in the world. Stripped of it all. All the attachments, the necessities of life the creature comforts right. until I was stripped down to the hmm. bare bone. And then I had to learn how not to build, build is external, create is internal. And we as women have the power to create and attract anything we desire, but we don't get still. We won't shut up. Oh man, we won't get still and we won't shut up. Cause by the way, this was what I didn't play for you before from the breakfast club here. This is why I didn't play for you before speaking about shutting up. Here's an exercise on how to do it wrong. We're on the side. I think that's why Look, my like, father, my father was a military. He was a mechanic. He was a bus driver. He was a police officer. So he was officer. exceptional. Your father was exceptional. My mother worked at Guardian Life Insurance. I'm the first person in my family to go to college. First person to graduate from college. And my parents put me through college. So I don't look at them as mediocre. I don't look at them as average. They are exceptional. And they did what they do to get their what kids through all this so stuff. What you said is so different than what and I'm I, talking and about. And I am the and, same with them. And I am the same. And that is just not intellectually honest. And the difference is what you said is, oh, you want to encourage and you want to do this. I do the same thing without putting people down. I'm not putting I, people down. I'm being very I honest. I think you are. And people have been saying, I don't think you were listening. Like, as much as you talk, you're not listening to what people oh, are saying. I'm listening. I'm you're not bothered not. by that, though. Not. I'm not because going to be shamed. Because people and they have opinions. Just like I you have your opinion, you can't talk over people and not let people talk. But you're also interrupting me, Envy. I'm not. I was talking. You keep He's hosting his program, and she did the major, the overwhelming majority of talking while she was there. But by the way, yeah, you won't shut up. Yeah. Hey, fellas, hurry, hurry, step right up and come grab this off the market. Who wants to come take this off the market? Come on, fellas. The line forms to the left. The line forms to the left. She told herself she didn't need black men. Don't worry, I don't need black men. I'll open up the doors to every damn body. She opened up the doors to everyone. They left that hot sauce sitting on the shelf, too. The problem with delusion is you can't get the rest of the world to play along with you. That's the problem with de being delusional. So Ilyana just really just spelled it out right there. Yeah, there's the problem. Won't sit still. Won't shut up. In other words, you won't let a man lead. You won't let one lead. And if a, ma a man is not going to risk life and limb for something he doesn't own. To all of you females, listen to me right now that your mother's failed you summarily. Your father is in and out of jail, deadbeat, or he's a beta and you want a productive simp. Understand something. Your mother has done grievous harm to you because a man is not going to risk life and limb for something he doesn't own. A man is not going to sit up here and, and, and give up everything he's got and risk losing everything he's got for something that doesn't belong to him. If you belong to him, you are his. There is nothing he's not going to give up. But if you, if it's fitty fitty and you call the shots, then just understand when trouble shows up, he's going to step back. It's like, oh, wait a minute. If there's a if there's a chance of getting zeroed out, I'm gonna let you hold that one. I'm gonna let you hold that. Attract anything we desire, but we don't get still. We won't shut up, and we manage everything through fear, control, and survival. Mm -hmm. Now let me deal with that one there right quick. She said that women in their position manage everything through fear. Men don't deal with things from a position of fear. 
65 mama's boys who take after their mammy do, but men don't deal with things from a position of fear. We have that stripped out of us young. We're not aggressive because we're afraid. We do it because it works for us. But men don't deal with things from a position of fear. Ebony is a ball of fear, confusion, and hatred. And that's why she can get a law license she can get something as complex as a law license, but can't get something as simple as a man. Now, if you want to know what other messed up beliefs she has, by the way, nobody went through this interview. I'm the only place that goes through these things step by step so that you all hear what the hell they really had to say. Because everybody talked about the bus driver comment. Let me drop another little nugget in here for you. And fellas, imagine this as the mother of your children in terms of providing and protecting. Um, and, I, and I think that's very common. So according to the U.S. Census, Ayanla, 23% of households in the country are single parent households, and we know 80% of them are led by women. How does this affect the child, uh, both l little girls, little boys, non-binary children? How does, how does that frame their expectation um, of women? Little boys, little girls, non-binary. This is a woman who will gleefully destroy your children. This is a Gabrielle Union. She will sit there and happily with a smile on her face. If she cannot control you, she will punish you. She will sit there in your house, take your son, the masculine reproduction of you, put a strawberry shortcake dress on him, and then if you don't allow her to, she'll divorce you and try to take 75%. She's letting you know right now, everything's a battlefield for her. Everything. Everything is about her getting dominance and control. Everything. Remember what I was telling you all here before? Remember what I told you before that she said that she's got, oh, great admiration for black men. Remember she said that before and I told you I'm going to show you proof. No, she doesn't. She's lying through her teeth. She's got nothing but contempt for us. She despises us. And she can't even hide it well. There's the real problem. Oprah could at least hide it pretty good. If you, you Now you saw the effect of what she did. But Oprah was syrupy sweet when she was handing out her poison. Ebony can't even scrounge together the scruples to do that. She hates us so much she can't even conceal it for her own good. She can't even do it for her own damn good. You'd figure she'd try. Oh, but she's not done yet. Here's another little gem she's going to throw out at you here. <laughs> okay. I'm looking forward to straightening my crown, uh, Dr. Ayana. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Let's get to the logistics, though. Let's get to the logistics. We know that black women are earning college degrees faster than anybody else. Many of us uh, are doing like, like, like we're doing, Ayana. We're getting those terminal degrees, those JDs, MD, PhDs. We also are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, uh, along with Latina women in America. Pew Research said that women are now out earning men. Out earning men yes. in 22 yes. of the largest cities in America, including where I live, New York, D.C., L.A., you name it. All right. For those of you who are with me here last year, you'll recognize and understand that what she just said was a complete farce. I already dealt with this, by the way, in case you didn't know, I already dealt with this. The Pew poll that they're talking about, you notice the key word in there, young Young women in several U.S. cities are out earning the men. Well, yeah, for entry level jobs. Yeah. But then again, that's not new. These are jobs that men don't really typically compete for. Men don't typically compete to be bank tellers, secretaries. Men don't typically compete for that. So those jobs that are set aside for that. Yeah, the women usually do that. And for young people, that's one thing. The males, however, are, are going for something different. 
Here's another little problem for Ebony. The other problem for Ebony, oh good, her mouth is finally shut. The other problem here for Ebony is that you notice that when she ran down that list of women winning and whatnot, and Sister Girl wins, you notice that she didn't mention the fact that black women are the ones in the most debt. All that degree chasing and job chasing, and you notice she didn't mention that, by the way, black women, oh, most degreed, most entrepreneurial, and she didn't mention most in debt. So in other words, not able to make good on all that degree chasing and job jumping. So they very conveniently paint this phony false picture, this phony fictitious picture of a win after win that they don't actually have. That's criminal to do that because she's misleading other young females. You know why? Because if you all want to know what it is I teach you about here every week, this is the lowest form of female. She was misled and lied to by her mother, so much so the point that she refers to her own mother as Gloria. She has so much respect and esteem for her mom that she refers to her mom as Gloria. That's how much she likes mom. That's what. That's how much of a great job mom did. That's how much respect she's got for mom. That's how much mom built for her. And she knows that her mother ran off her father. She knows it. So rather than her doing like Ilyana and taking accountability, she's sitting up here lying, passing on the lies to the next generation. She's telling the next generation of young black women that they're killing it. They're winning. You don't need no man. She knows she's lying to them and that it's not going to work for them because she sees it's not working for her in her own life, but it isn't stopping her from repeating these lies to the next generation because she refuses to take accountability for her own failures to admit that her and her mother, not just her mother, but her too, both were wrong across the board. They don't want to sit up here and admit that. They don't want to admit it. So now she's just going to poison the well for anyone else. This is villainous. To say something like that is just absolutely villainous. And she should know better than that. But then again, I mean, she's like, hey, what do I got to lose? Logistics, though. Let's get to the logistics. We know that black women are earning college degrees faster than anybody else. Many of us uh, are doing like 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 we're doing, Ayanla. We're getting those terminal degrees, those JDs, MD, PhDs. We also are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, uh, along with Latina women in America. Pew Research said that women are now out earning men out earning men yes. in 22 yes. of the largest cities in America, including where I live, New York, DC, LA, you name it. When we talk, and I know that you've said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question, but I do want you to speak Ayanla to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of as promised, let me take you back a little bit here. As promised. C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay of black men. As long as you're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. To, uh... 
I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all. Oh, we know. Trust us, oh, we already know that one right there. We already know about that one. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. You're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. Build. When some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not. Men across the spectrum. Now, could you imagine the reception that a black male would get if he sat up here boldly, defiantly telling you, and, you know, women around the world, they got unrealistic expectations. Every color, race, and creed, I know I've done them all. I know I've done them all. ...to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. About across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum. Trust me, I've done them all. Um You've done them all. Done them all? Or got done by them all? Yeah. Real classy act this one is. See, while everybody else was talking about the bus driver comment, nobody was talking about this. While all of you have been fixated on the bus driver comment, you missed all this other detritus. Look it up. You looked all this, overlooked all this other debris. While everyone was looking at the bus driver comment, Take a look at her holistically. How the hell did you miss all this other stuff that she was saying? Um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources. And some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a What type of man is going to lead her? What type of man is going to lead this hippopotamus buffalo? And I mean that in the sense of being an overbearing animal. What type of man is going to try to lead this? See, what she's doing is showing the world why it is that men stay away from females who get into certain professions. When you got your lawyers, these people who are professionally trained to argue with a stop sign. Don't have to be rational. Don't have to be logical. They're trained to argue with a stop sign. Your lawyers, your psychologists, your administrators. There's a reason that these women are perpetually single. A man's not going to fool with you. Because this is what he would be trying to fool with. Not going to happen statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources. And some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's, a problem. that's a problem. Now, did you all see here? Ayala is, is doing what she's supposed to be doing. Every time Ayala talks, do you notice it goes differently? Did you notice it's going way differently? Every time she talks, the energy is different. The words are different. The phraseology is different. She's coming at everything from a position of accountability. One of y'all is suited for results. The other one is just suited for a lifelong ass whooping. But did you notice that when she said, would you take the bus driver? You notice it was stunned silence. For those, so for those of you who never actually heard the clip here, it was stunned silence when she said that. Would you date the bus driver? Uh, uh, if he owns the bus company, I would. 
Here's the killing part. I wonder if Zaddy got to own a bus company. Now, this fella here might have been papered up, but that's my po that's not my point. Because you know how it goes. You all know how it goes. Let me go ahead and explain something to you here. Let me go ahead and remind you of one more thing. See, it's never the same standard for us that it is for everyone else. It's never the same standard for us. Not at all. Not at all. You see, in order to date to be a black man, when if Kim Kardashian is going to be with a black man, he's got to be the best in the world at what he does. The absolute best in the world. If it's a white man, he can be, just be any old white pookie. So as far as she's concerned, she's like, you know, white pookie can hang at least until he depreciates the value of them draws to the point you can't stand it anymore. Then it's like, ooh, hell, let me go see if I can go get me uh, one of these guaranteed nigga bailouts. Hush up, white pookie. Uh, hello, usher. But it's no different for anybody else. To be with Lala Anthony, you got to be Carmelo. Now, for the white dude, you can just be average white band. For the white dude, you can just be average white band. Gabby Sidibe, remember her delusional ass? She just got with an average white dude. Even with her snow woman built ass, she wanted to have a top 1% black man. But when she had a chance with a white dude, she's like, hey, average white dude, fellow working at Target, pushing the buggies, he'll do. So when you're a black man, you got to overachieve and excel. So no, I do not for a moment believe for a single second that you had to be an extraordinary white man to get with Ebony. But if you're a black man, you got to own the damn bus company. If you're a black man for her, you got to own the bus company. Here's the problem with what she's saying. So you're going to be a black man who is going to be eminently built, eminently ready, eminently prepared. You on top of the damn world. You've sit up here and overcome every obstacle the world can throw at you. You're in the top one half of 1%, which is what she's describing. You're in the top one half of 1%. And this is all you get. You get this hissing viper in your bed. This is all you get. You're a black man who has worked your ass into the concrete and this is the reward you're gonna get. And she's sitting there getting tennis elbow, breaking her arm, straightening her arm, patting herself on the back as if she's some fantastic prize to be gained with all of her venomous, vicious attitude. Think about this for a few moments. You would be marrying a woman who calls her mom Gloria. You can see the damn problems. You'd be marrying a woman who sits up here on national television or international internet and talked about what her daddy wasn't. And you think she ain't coming for you? You think she's not coming for you. You think she's going to be sitting there baking cookies when she comes home for you. When she's literally sat here and made a name for herself demanding things from the world. A top one percenter isn't looking for a damn hassle and a problem. Um, no disrespect, Yanla, but he ain't looking for an alpha female either, except an alpha among females. Now, when we think of an alpha female, we're thinking of a female who is a standout among females. There is no intergender competition between us. We're not looking for a chick who thinks she can compete with men because you can't. We want a female who outcompetes the other females at being feminine and competent. We're looking for a female who outcompetes the other females. You can be an alpha among the other females. You start trying to compete with us, x out. But for those of you who didn't hear it, yeah, that was what she said.
statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources. And some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? Stunned yeah. silence. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's a problem. problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that, but the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm -hmm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm -hmm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's now, here's the only issue I would have with an Ilyana doing this. This is the only one I'd have an issue with here is because she's doing the Kendra G thing. If I'm just going to be totally honest and all candor, she's doing the Kendra G thing. She's not being brutally frank and being totally honest with old girl about where she messing up at. She's not doing that. She's not doing it. Because you see... If she were being totally honest, she would call her on her bull crap and say what I said. But ma'am, you don't want to date a bus driver. Problem. The, the type of men who own the bus or the bus company do not date women like you. He's looking for a woman to be his co-pilot, not a woman thinking that she's uh, co-owning. Men, the guy who drives the bus will put up with your mess. The guy who owns the bus, he ain't looking for a chick to drive him. He ain't looking for a chick to drive him. So this is where Yanla doesn't, she can't speak for the men. As a man, we would all say, hey, the fellas who drive the, who own the bus don't take women like you, Ebony. They don't take women like you. This isn't so much about understanding. This isn't about understanding men as much as it is being told to your face. What you want, you don't qualify for. You don't qualify. You don't. And with nobody saying it like that, that's an issue. That's an issue. That's going to be a tough ass pill to swallow because you see, you put all this stock and you put all this credibility into getting your degree. You put all this stock and all this credibility into getting a degree. That's what you did. And that's why you're so married to it. You're so married to it because that's all you have to offer. You put years into building yourself up as being your own protector and provider. And what you didn't realize is that none of this matters to men. Men don't care about that. That doesn't increase your value to us. It increases your value to your employer. It means nothing to the men. The things that men do care about, you've already admitted you're a damn pit bull. Men don't marry pit bulls. Men don't want to date pit bulls. That's why she's doing that. That's why she's doing that. So she put all of her chips and all her credibility and she bet the farm on getting a degree. And now she realizes that degree doesn't mean a damn thing to the men. Well, I'll provide for myself. Yeah, the problem is you can't snuggle up with your degree at night. It's you and a bunch of other chicks out there using lint rollers or, or not to get the dog hair out the sheets. Where there's supposed to be a man sitting there. Now she's 40 years old and she's realizing, oh hell, that this is it right here. It's do or die time and she ain't ready. There isn't a man in the wings waiting 
to take her off the market. And she wants to pretend it's the men's fault. Baby, you already threw them legs wide open and said, look here, any fella, black, white, red, yellow, green, polka dot, you already played your only card. You already threw the gates, the doors and the gates open and everything else you got. You already threw all those open. You already did that. And all you set up here and did was show that you couldn't make nothing happen. You couldn't make nothing happen. You already tried it. If there was another man of another race who met your qualifications or more to the point who was willing to do anything with you. If there was one who would take you, you already shot your shot. You're not fooling anybody. You already went into the sexual marketplace and were ready to throw black men over the bridge. You already tried that one. Who the hell you think you're fooling? You already took your best shot. You already took your best shot. You think you're going to sit up here and, 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 and pretend like you got some leverage now that you're going to double back to black men because Zaddy wasn't interested neither? It's too late. We already see you for what you are. You're not talking to black men because you love black men. You're talking to black men because you can't stand your daddy. You can't stand your mama. You already tried your non-black options and they want less to do with a pit bull than black men do. They just wanted to go ahead and take you for a test drive. And then he brought you right back around the block and dropped you off in front of your house, if not down the street from it. And that's where you're at. Because today, men don't take problems off the market. The time for you to get serious about this, Miss 40-year-old, was when you were 22 years old. The time for Kim to get serious about this was a decade ago. Baby, I told Kim Kardashian back then, I said it, ain't nothing coming over the horizon for you. You can try the doe eyes all you want to. The problem is there isn't, nobody's going to get any elevation. You ain't that young, fresh little white girl that Negroes could say she was the white girl with a plastic surgeon enhanced body that looks like a black woman. You can't play that card anymore, baby. You've aged out. That's it. You've worn it out. It's not new anymore. It's old as hell. You can't go back to the well on that one. It's over. You played the card. Either you was going to stick with Kanye and be in it to win it or game over. Same thing for you, Lala. I said the same. I said it there over a year ago. Folks wanted to argue with me. Now, Lala told TMZ what I said the whole damn time. Dating prospects. What dating prospects? I don't have any. I don't have any. Which is exactly what I said the whole damn time. I said nobody's going to be interested in Lala Anthony except her husband. And that's it. Let me go ahead and give you all a refresher course on exactly how this works. In case folks forgot here. Because apparently maybe they did. Ladies, I'm talking tonight about when you turn 40. And whether you're famous or not, it doesn't matter. Because it's going to be the same damn thing no matter where you go. It's going to be the same damn thing no matter where you go. These folks don't understand that. Ladies, once you get a certain age, you know, let me just go ahead and tell everybody what the truth is. You don't have any new producers to choose from. You don't get to sit up here and go down to the one percenter store. Go yank one off the shelf on discount. Because you're ready to go now. You're ready to check out now. So let me go down to the producer store and go yank one off the clearance rack. It doesn't work that way. So now there's nobody new coming into the forum for you. 
So what you're relegated to now is going back through your mental and emotional Rolodex of the men you used to know. You are not that fresh 25, 26 year old female that you were. That ain't you anymore. You're not that little baby faced young chick. That isn't you anymore. You out here throwing elbows with soccer moms and their daughters. Now you throwing the elbows with the daughters. How the hell you going to win that game? The men you trying to talk to are winking at your damn daughter. Cause they're like, finally, she's of age. Let's go see what we can do with this. Marjorie Harvey standing next to Laurie Harvey is a damn joke. Can I just tell it like it is? She's lucky that Steve saw Marjorie before he saw Laurie. Um, I'm just saying, theoretically, you get the idea. I know, I know, chronologically, that wasn't going to work. But you get the point. If Steve had to wait longer, if it had just been the last two, three years, you lucky Steve saw the mama and not the daughter. You wasn't going to win that fight. You were not going to win that fight and you know it. Lala Anthony can sit up here and strip butt booty naked on as many television shows as she wishes to. She's been doing it for over a year now. She was doing it back when she was married. Will somebody please name for me the man who has jumped up to say, you know what, that Lala looking so damn fine with uh, what's his face from power, the white dude laying on top of her. I need to go get that. Come on, all you damn Instagram idiots who were telling me how wrong I was a year ago, who swore up and down that she's so fine, she gonna be overflowing with options. Jason don't know what he's talking about. It's a year later. How's that working out for her and Janelle Monet and Megan Good and Kim Kardashian and all the rest of them? How's it working out? For all the folks who set up here lying, spreading lies, making comments that were lying, hate posting. How the hell did it work out? Now it's a year later and you can see how it worked out for her and Kim. They're at the damn Met Gala. They're at the damn Met Gala. And there are other females up there who are showing off their husbands. There are other females up there showing off theirs. And y'all sitting over here, the old wives. And yes, you are old now. Y'all are old now. Got the nerve to sit up here and insult the world's intelligence. Talking about, I'm 40, I'm relatively young at 40. Ma'am, no, you ain't. That is denial and wishful thinking talking. No, you're not. There isn't a 40-year-old man who looks at you as a young female. You all the way grown, trying to gaslight the world. And if you will not be honest with yourself, about something as basic and obvious as the fact that 40 ain't young and the clock has run out, then what the hell's going to happen under a roof with you with a man living with you? If she's willing to sit here in front of the world, make a straight ass of herself, arguing that 40 is the new 20, can you imagine what she's going to do under the roof with a man? Ladies, understand something. If you are alone without a proper man long enough, you go crazy. If your mama didn't already make you nuts enough, you being alone without a proper man sends you all the damn way over. It sends you all the way over. The game is over. The game is over. Let me just tell y'all right now. It is done. It's finished. It's finished. Kim can sit up here and put on all the pearls she wants to. She's following in her mother's footsteps. She had a chance to get out of this, out the game clean. She followed in her mother's footsteps. 
And now Lala is showing the damn world. It doesn't matter how much working out she does, how many TV shows she goes on. Y'all need to stop telling these old women that they find. And I'm talking to the dusty ass, crusty ass, bummy ass males out there. You fellas talking about how fine Mary J. Blige is. And I hope I don't meet no none of her exes. I don't need them. I don't need any more, any more old women's exes calling up. It's the last thing I need. Don't nobody go tagging Mary J. Blige. I don't want nobody's, I don't want nobody else's exes yelling at me this year. Let's just leave that alone. But y'all niggas need to stop that. Mary J. Blige is not some young tender thing. A bunch of bummy ass males who their only female interaction is with a damn computer screen or a cellular phone screen. But you've got nothing in the real damn world. So you're looking at old women. You're looking at a bunch of old ass chicks. Trying to sit up here and convince the world that she's some hot, sexy ass thing because you are just, I mean, a bunch of sexual vagrants. You're panhandlers. You'll take anything that gets thrown out the damn back of the Chinese restaurant. You're sitting back there by the dumpsters every night. These women are old. And you have gas lit their heads, and this is the vicious part of it. You fellas sit up here and lie to these women because you really hate women. And you're just sitting there lying to them saying, well, hopefully if she believes it, we'll gas their heads up with compliments because they're particularly vulnerable to vanity because they are narcissistic and vain. And you're like, hell, if we just gas all the women's heads up, maybe at some point I'll get lucky. Ladies, y'all don't understand. The majority of the male population of America is playing the long booty game with you. Most of you women don't understand that. Ladies, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of how males operate. And I want you to remember this for the rest of your damn lives. Jason Black's first rule of salesmanship is to convince the customer that the decision to buy was theirs and not yours. Now, you all know that's Jason Black's Number one, the, I have the three rules of salesmanship. And number one is convince the customer that the decision to buy was theirs and not yours. Ladies, if a man bumped into you at the grocery store, you was wearing the hell out that dress or whatever. And you were at your car and you're trying to put this damn 48 bottle case of water in the back of it. And look like you can't even call to get one half without. And hey, can I help you with that? You got to understand how men think. Men are strategic. So you see what a man thinks is, I'll help her put this water in the car today. He's also going to help five or six other women put their water in the car or whatever else, the dog food or whatever else would be in there. But statistically speaking, depending on the store, there's a good chance he could run into you a second time. So if he's smart, he lays the groundwork the first time. But because you're not the only female that he's, quote, helped put her things in the car, there's a number of you. So a man knows the odds of being able to talk to you the first time are probably pretty slim. But if he's already made contact with you before, and if he's able to make contact with you again, incidentally, he has no control over it. But if he can incidentally make contact with you again, well, now he's got, he's already passed first base. He starts on second base the next time. If you both shop at the same stores, if you both shop or frequent the same mall, if you both frequent the same bookstore, frequent the same restaurant. There's an incentive in men prepping the soil. There's an incentive in that. That's the way men think and men operate. So you just think, oh, he helped you with the water and he's gone on his way. I mean, now if you look like City Bay, he probably did. But otherwise, it's like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit this at some point in the future. You or one of the other two or three dozen. Men believe in playing the long booty game. And guess what? 
I don't mean that he might see you again next week. He might see you again next month, next year, at the kids' PTA, at the park, at the golf course, at the convenience store, at the gas station. He might see you somewhere else. He might see you somewhere else. That's the way men think and operate. Well, guess what? Men do it with celebrities too. These fellas are bummy as hell on the internet, in the comment section, in the like sections. They're gassing Kim Kardashian. These fellas will sit up here and call Kim Kardashian every nasty, filthy name you can imagine. Y'all know full damn well. Y'all see this stuff happen with males online all the time. Chicks are constantly busting dudes in their inboxes. These guys are sitting up here calling these women everything but the child of God, cursing them out, calling them trash, calling them whores, calling them every damn thing else. These fellas sit up there and do that. And next thing you know, somebody will sit up here and out them as being in their inbox. So in public, he'll be calling her every name in the book, but in her inbox, hello, baby. Hey, queen. Don't you understand that's the game? You can't believe these fellas. The only men that you can believe are the ones who break with resources. Those are the only men you can believe. Every damn body else is pulling a scam. The only men that you can believe are the ones who break with resources. Everyone else is running a scam. It doesn't cost a man anything to drop a like on your Instagram picture. That costs nothing. It costs a man nothing to leave a comment on your Facebook or your TikTok. It costs him nothing. That's free. It costs him nothing to show up in your DMs. That costs nothing. Nothing at all. That's what I want you to understand. That's why compliments from men are useless and worthless. It costs nothing. But it might be symbolic enough to your vanity to get you to overlook the fact that, by the way, he didn't bring you anything. Then when you sit up here and screw it up with the fellow who actually brought tangibles... Now you yelling and crying. Now you're standing at the Met Gala hoping that, well, I'm around a bunch of other rich men here. And there were rich men there. Dr. Dre was there. Robert Pattinson. There was a whole laundry list of of males who were there. Whole laundry list. Hell, Pusha T was there. There's a whole laundry list of them were there. Whole laundry list. So these chicks were hoping to get picked up. You can't blame them. They're going. These are the single females I told you all about. They're going to the big events, y'all. They're going to the big events. I mean, Dr. Dre was at the Met Gala. He was there. They going for it. They out there schmoozing and trying to get chosen. They're doing it. And it ain't working. It's going to be just a long, ugly decline now. It's going to be just long and ugly. You'll be trying your best to resurrect yourself from this, but forget about it. I wanted to do tonight's program because I wanted to do this retrospective here for you. I wanted to show you how things really turned out. For all the folks who were saying up and down that Kim Kardashian had found happiness with old Pete and Pete can't get her to look him in the damn eye now. And she's already jumped off of him. Look, this picture right here says it all. She is so obviously auditioning for another producer. She ain't even being coy about it. She's not even being subtle. Every man in the world knows that look. Usher isn't really even looking straight at her like that. But you can see she is gazing at him. She wants to make sure he remembers her. Oh, and I'm going to say one more damn thing. Do you see how close she is to him? He can smell her perfume on her. Hell, he can probably smell her hair gel. He can probably smell her hair conditioner. 
Take a look at how close she is up on him. Do you see how close up she is on him? She's closer to Usher than she is to her ex. Throw another picture. Do you see she's closer to Usher than she is to her ex? She is closer to Usher than she is to her ex. That's body language. She is on the prowl and she's trying to see what in the world she can get now. She can hear it. That clock is ticking its ass off at 42. That is it. And she's like, boy, if I could keep Kanye sane for a weekend, this would be great if I could do that. If I can just keep him sane for a weekend, I'd be in good shape. Maybe. Who knows? She ain't waiting around too damn long. She's back out there in the marketplace and look at what the hell she was able to drag home. And let me tell you right now, wouldn't this be a sad commentary? Kim Kardashian divorced Kanye West. She has now been spotted with Pete Davidson and Usher. With Pete Davidson and Usher Raymond. Boy. No, they ain't a step down. No, you're doing just fine. You're doing great, kid. You're doing great. By the way, you see the way she's doing her hands? Isn't that the call me gesture? Call me. Don't ignore it now. Call me. If this is what's happening to bona fide celebrities... If this is what has occurred to bona fide celebrities and I called it when it happened. Other folks out there were doubting it when she got with Pete Davidson. Like, oh, Jason, she got another one. I'm like, no, she hasn't. He's not. He's not going to make it across the finish line. She's not going to cash in Kanye West for Pete Davidson unless Pete Davidson can start making $20 million a year. How the hell is she going to go from a guy who could put five my box in front of her house to a fellow who couldn't? Because at the end of the day, that's what Ebony Williams is saying. Ebony Williams is saying, hey, where the tangibles? I don't believe your words. Where the tangibles? Bring me the tangibles and I'll see if I believe you. That's what she's saying. Because nothing else is going to do. However, you might disagree with me. Therefore, the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the program that all your favorite YouTubers love to hate watch. This is the one that they're all tuned in for here because we get the insight and analysis you'll receive nowhere else while these other folks are saying they don't know and guessing their way through it. We're the place that accurately and correctly calls it each and every time. I'm also going to go ahead and throw up the Zoom link at the top of the chat. Do remember that I do give priority to Zoom callers. So if you are on Zoom, I do give priority to the Zoom callers. However, remember, if you're going to be on Zoom, remember you have to turn your microphone and your camera on. But I do give priority to Zoom callers. The woman's wasteland is getting bigger out there. Let me tell you, it's never been harder. It's never been harder to get this to crack off. Car prices have never been higher. Home prices have never been higher. I just saw a study that said that 72% of millennials do not expect to ever be able to buy and own a home. Think that over for a few moments. Lord... Who is that, my damn super chat? <sighs> it's gonna be a long night. Oh, it's gonna be a long night. Oh, no, I, I, I just it, things went south just that damn quick. Just that damn quick it went south, boiling. Oh man. Oh, cause that that teaspoon that tablespoon ain't gonna hold me. 
That tablespoon wasn't gonna hold me. No, 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 no. Usually you can take that tablespoon of that Pepto Bismol and oh, that tablespoon ain't gonna hold me. Let me let me throw this back like a 40 ounce. That ain't gonna hold me. Let me just get everything coated up now. Let me just coat up everything now. Cause I, I can see how the evening's about to go. Just barely opened up the phone lines and it already flew off the rails. I'm sure she's gonna mentor and teach all of us about how we, uh, how what the ladies need to do a good demand. So, <sighs> all right, let me just make sure I'm stabilized. In any case, ladies, there's a reason why I'm doing the nice program here. I'm doing the nice program because I wanted to give us a retrospective on this, that the things that I told you years ago, oh, I'm going to keep track of it. I'm going to keep track of it. And if I'm wrong, if it was so easy to prove me wrong, if I'm the one in error, it should be real easy to prove it. It shouldn't be hard to prove it if I'm in error. One of these chicks I called out years ago should have been able to disprove it, especially with all the folks sitting up here caping for them. One of these chicks should have been able to prove I was wrong. One of them should have. None of them did. So if they could prove it, why the hell haven't they? Should be pretty easy. Oh, it ain't easy. I know I'm hurting feelings tonight. I'm going to get to the phone lines here in just a moment. Let me remind you of something here, ladies. Uh, I got to tell you what the damn truth is one more time here. For those of you who have forgotten about it, you need to understand that a woman over the age of 30 is a bill. I was the guy who created that phrase. A female over the age of 30 is a bill. A female over the age of 40 is not a dime. There's no such thing as a dime over the age of 40. And if she's over the age of 30, she's a bill. So this idea that you can be over the age of 40 and everything's hitting on all cylinders, uh, lies, lies. Let's go ahead and hit up the phone lines. If you have been instructed by either me or my mods to call in, it's not just a great suggestion. That's an order. So the telephone lines are now open. If you have been instructed by either me or my moderators to call in, that was not a suggestion. That was an order. So if you're not on the phone lines, well, you'll take a permanent vacation. By the way, uh, in the chat room, Natasha, uh, I got your pictures. Let me know if I have your permission to post them and I'll let everybody, I'm not going to make a judgment on them. I'm going to let everybody else make their judgment. Let me get caller from area code 323. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, good evening, big brother Jason. This is brother Elijah calling out of Queens, New York. All right, brother Elijah, what's on your mind? Um, brother, I was um, listening to um, what that sister, um, Ebony K. Williams, was saying. And for a second, I was thrown off because I thought she was um, spewing your talking points about you know, not being um, being average. She not was good enough. She until was. You broke down the whole. Universe. Absolutely, she was. Oh, absolutely. What she was saying about that part of it about not being average. Absolutely true. Absolutely correct. But it's worthless if you don't have it in context. Yes, sir. Because she doesn't mean the same thing I do. She's yes, got an entitlement complex. That's the problem with yes, her. Sir. She feels she's entitled. She feels that men owe her something. So what she's talking is shaming points. Listen to everything that she said. Everything she says from a position of shaming people. That the men aren't worthy. Yes, well, that's what she said to Ilyanla. We saw what the hell she said. Ayanla, it's fine. We saw what she said. She said these men ain't yes, ready to lead. What are we supposed to do when all these men ain't ready to lead? The, when they yes, don't sir. qualify. Without her ever yes, stating sir. what it is that makes her qualify. That's the problem. What is it that makes her qualify for these men? 
She's in no position to talk nor teach. She doesn't have anything to offer. She's a failure at it. The truth of the matter is that Ebony Williams is the average female. Yes, Ebony sir. Williams is a basic chick. Now, she's not going to want to hear that. But the truth is a basic chick qualifies for a basic dude. What she's going to do is take a look at her law degree or take a look at her income and say, I can't be basic. Look at my profession. A, your income yes, doesn't determine your value as a man or as a woman. That's what Ayala was telling her. That's what I'm saying. Your income doesn't determine your value, Ebony. You're a basic chick with a law degree. That's all you are. And you're telling yourself that because you have an above average profession that you must be above average because you have an above average profession. No, ma'am, you don't. So the reason why she's cracking, listen, the reason why she's cracking the whip on black men about y'all, you can't be the bus driver unless you own the bus. I, I can't date you unless you own the bus company is because what she's trying to say is that she's worth more than the bus driver. Yes, and the truth is she isn't. So that's why she's cracking the whip on you and saying you need to be doing better and there need to be a lot more options because I'm worth so much more. And the truth of the matter is a woman is only worth as much as she can motivate a man. Yes, and a sir. fellow who drives the bus is not going to be motivated to become the owner of the bus company by being with her. She doesn't motivate. Yes, she sir. nags. She doesn't inspire. She nags. Because she was taught by her yes, mama sir. to be a nag. And that's where she is in life. I have another question, big brother, and I'm going uh, land my plane. Why is it so many uh, beautiful women out here run the clock out and they don't realize they have a short period to cash in and leave the casino? Why do they waste their lives and try so try everything to get back in the marketplace and it's already over for them? That's my question. Because they told themselves that they had unlimited retries. Yes, sir. I mean, they, they were raised by, you have a gen, two generations now of delusional women raised by delusional women. So the grandmama yes, told sir. them the lie the grandmama wanted to believe, and, and, and it's just been perpetuating since then. But they don't actually spend any time around men. That's the real issue. They don't actually spend any time around men. They don't get any insight from men. They don't listen to men. They don't. There are no men fact checking them and confirming. Hey, is this really what you men think? They don't want to talk to us. They just want us to co-sign whatever they say. Because she's like, okay, my eggs are getting ready to dry up. I chose this career. I chose to do what I'm doing. I need now. I need you to fall in line for my plan. So everything yes, with them comes from this very abusive, very exploitative position. And that yes, only sir. works on a man who doesn't have an idea of survival. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. We appreciate that. Let me go ahead and go over here to Zoom. Let me make sure here that Charles, by the way, let me go ahead and load up the remove option. All right, if you're going to be on Zoom, Please remember that you do have to have your camera and your microphone on for that. If you're going to be on Zoom, if you just want to talk, you can call in on the phone for that. All right, Charles, what is on your mind, brother? Make sure you have your mic on, Charles. You can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, Jason. What's on your Shit, mind, brother? Sorry. Fuck. Uh... You're on, brother. What is on your mind? Jason, just want to let you know, thank you for the good work you've been doing. I've been... Jason, can you hear? Yes, brother, we can hear you. You are killing the program. I'm sorry, man. Have a great program. Thank you for the time that you put into the, to everything. Thank you for everything. Have a great day. All right. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. He's nervous as hell, y'all. 
By the way, what happened to Joseph? Joseph, the nerd whose girlfriend was exploiting him. Joseph called in on the wrong program. I told him to call back in. He called in on the wrong program. I told him to call Monday. He didn't do it. Somebody get a hold of Joseph. Somebody get a hold of Joseph. Let him know he was supposed to call back in. He said he was calling back in. I told him wrong program. Call back Monday. He didn't call back Monday. I wonder if old girl got him. I wonder if old girl got him. All right, let me go ahead and get back over here to blog talk. Let me get caller from area code 206. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, uh, yes, I'm Ali from uh, Seattle. Ali from Seattle, and what's on your mind? So, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, you know, give my thoughts about this uh, topic, about Ebony Williams. And, you know, based on my experience as a, you know, young black man that uh, recently finished college, I dealt with, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, same mentality as the Ebony Williams. And, you know, I feel like a lot of the feminism, you know, that they learn in college really affects them and makes them, you know, overvalue a lot of like their expectations in men in the future. And, you know, a lot of them, when they're younger, they'd be dealing with like, you know, dudes that usually they would not deal with if they weren't, you know, at the same level as them. So it makes them really think like they're at that level when they're not. So uh, I'm just, you know, wondering like, what's your thoughts about that? Well, first of all, they didn't gain these ideas, these notions in college. That's not what they picked up at. They, they, they picked up these notions from their mama. They picked them up as children. College just refined what was already there because your colleges today are basically overrun with a bunch of failed females. But they didn't go to college to learn mm. this idiocy. They learned it in the home. And they just executed what they were looking for there. That was it. So they got you heard her. She got it from her mom. That's why I was pointing out to you. Hey, did, did anybody take it? Take notice of the fact that she said her mama was a bus driver. How many feminine female bus drivers have you met in your life? How many? Yeah, how many female bus drivers have you met who you like, damn, she would kill it in a cocktail dress? How many? So I'm just saying, I ain't spitting on the female bus drivers. I'm just saying that's not a feminine profession. It isn't. Yeah. It is good. And, it and is good, honest, was, honest work. You are a salt of the earth person. You are no less of a human being. But can we just keep it real? That's like saying that a man working at a romance novel publishing company or a perfume factory is enhancing his, that that job enhances his masculinity. No, it doesn't. That's like saying a man working at Victoria's Secret. They've got some dudes who work there, but those aren't the alpha males. And what do you think in terms of like, in uh, especially, you know, in America and in the West, like what do you think if things are like this bad right now in terms of, you know, how uh, the dynamics between men and women are. And, you know, I, based on her interview, I noticed how she kind of was the, comparing black men and women and kind of like making it seem as if we're two different groups instead of, you know, as one community. What do you think that comes from? And like why she views like black once men again, as, it's like, from different her, from black Once women. again, it's from the mother. The mother did not teach her a sense of family or an idea of family. The other half, it comes from her father. She is overflowing with she's boiling over with with hatred and contempt so now you've got a grown woman she was an angry young child now she's an angry woman the only problem is if you try to get into a relationship with her now you're giving a little angry little person power and power isn't something you give to somebody who doesn't know what to do with it except bust you over the head with it. You don't give selfish little right. people power. Individuals who lack empathy, individuals who are narcissistic, individuals who don't build people up, you don't give them power. That's dangerous if you do that. That's dangerous. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Um, as promised, okay, uh, Natasha, all right, everyone. Natasha did send me her pictures. Thank you very much for doing that. We appreciate that. Say hello to Natasha here. So I'm not going to make a judgment call of any kind here, but this is the uh, Natasha. She's in the chat room. Thank you very much for uh, sending your pictures here. So um, I'm not going to lie. You do look like the kind of female who would drive a bus. Um, 
take that how you will, but uh, I, I can see you driving the bus. I can. I don't think I quite see your plumbing. I don't, I don't think I quite see that, but bus driver, yeah, I can believe that. I can believe it. Caller from Erico 843, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? DBA, Tobias out of Phoenix. Tobias out of Phoenix, what's on your mind? Man, I saw I saw that interview, man. And, uh, and then I read an article where it talked about the white dude that she showed a picture of that he left her during COVID. Yeah, to go be and, with his uh, to go be with his family. So she's she's such a yep. wonderful person to be around that during the pandemic he said, "Man, let me go take my chances with my family, with my real family." Yeah, yeah you're the fiance. Yeah, this is a good enough time to jump out of here. And the rep said that she was selfish; that she felt like she should be number one. And he was also paying for a three her three bedroom apartment in New York City. So she had it, and that's it. And what no one has told this woman, yes, you're a nice-looking woman, but this is it. You may only have one shot at the golden ticket. They think they have all these turns, all these turns, but it isn't because everybody can meet 10 men, right, with the same amount of money. Maybe one wants to to spend on her and change her life. No one tells these women that. They think because they got boobs or behind that they could just get a man and they'll just provide for him. It doesn't work that way. Well, brother, it's because they want to believe they got a cheat code. And the truth of the matter mm-hmm. is what nobody wants to acknowledge is that giving a woman what she thinks she wants, that costs, man. That's a heavy mm-hmm. cost. It ain't light. And right now you have a situation where the men, you know, it's like they say online right now, the men are working five times harder than they than their grandfathers to get a woman who's five times worse than their grandmother. Mm-hmm. In every metric, your grandmama didn't have 30 bodies under her damn belt by the time she was 20. Your mama didn't have your grandmama didn't have five or six sex videos. Your grandmama wouldn't drag around six or seven bastard kids. Your grandmama wouldn't talk about strong and independent. Your grandmama was down there at the church. That's not what your grandmother was mm-hmm. doing. Your grandmother wasn't no boss chick. Your grandmother was perfectly fine with the bus driver. She took a look in the mirror and realized, ooh, I'm a basic chick. Let me, let me appreciate what I've got. What I'm saying is that, and you understand this, Tobias, you're looking at a generation that defies mathematics. You can't mm-hmm. all be boss babes. That's mathematically impossible. You can't all be boss chicks. You can't be. You can't be. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mathematically impossible that all these females that we're meeting today, that they're all boss chicks. And that we as the men are just too stupid or narrow-minded or ignorant or whatever to understand how great they are. That's mathematically impossible. Because that's not Mm -hmm. what we're really... The results they're getting would show you that. So if they were to take inventory of themselves where they actually are, then they would be talking about something different. But the problem is, instead of them looking at themselves and saying, I'm a basic chick... They're instead looking at the men and saying, ooh, you lacking. And that's what it becomes. So you can have this female who is a biting ass bulldog sitting there in front of Ilyana Van Zandt and all the rest of the damn world talking this nonsense with nobody checking what's really wrong. Not even Ilyana. She didn't even check what was really wrong to let her know, baby, the type of men you want, they don't want you. Mm-hmm. You can get the layup. Yeah. And like you said, this dude was paying for her apartment in New York. Tobias, you know what the hell it is? He wasn't paying yep. for her apartment. He was paying for his. <laughs> so he knows exactly what the hell you're going to be when he tiptoed through town to lay up. He doesn't have to go looking yep. for you. He, he's like, hey, my money is so damn straight. I can buy apartments like I buy shoes. They're not used to a man who can operate like that. He's like, baby, look, here, I can buy cars like I buy shoes. That 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 apartment you in that little old four thousand dollars a month is not gonna break me. Mm-mm. They're not used You're to right. that, so she's like, okay, she doesn't understand. It's like, baby, look here, he's gonna have another chick in that damn apartment before you can leave. Matter of fact, she's probably gonna come knock on the door. 
he he's literally can have some have you replaced this afternoon. She hasn't gotten the memo. Her attitude won't allow her to. She believes that you should be grateful to just to be with her. And, and that he could find another one. And one thing that that women like her miss, and no one ever asks, why should a man with resources be with you? What is so special about you? Because women like Ebony, like, you know, the 40, 50-year-old women in our day, we were kids. They would have stayed in that apartment, shut the hell up, and not question anything. Because the money was coming in, they had to do a thing. And they kept quiet. But these women today, they they believe that the same things a man uses to attract a woman will attract a man worth the flip. No, it doesn't, because we provide the financial security and the protection. And if she wants to reference that, don't do the Pew Research. Go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's where you go for labor statistics. They're the ones that still say men, black men still make more money. And they talk about college degrees. What are they getting degrees in? And they say business owners, you know this, Jay, that's just between self-employed and a business owner. How much are you making in that business as well? Uh, so that's a lot of things that these people don't question and leave out because they're scared of hurt feelings. While we got a woman here who was laid up with a white man for four years talking about black men. <laughs> it's like, why we, why we, why anybody looks at her? And my one other thing is she rubs elbows with men of all races with resources. Why ain't none of them wiped her up yet? And she's 40. Well, brother, here's the thing. She she rubs el- she doesn't just rub elbows she throws elbows. That's mm-hmm. the problem. She wants to dominate a room, but she doesn't want to dominate a room mm-hmm. full of females. She wants to dominate a room full of men too, and we're not looking for her to do that. We're not. Here's the other problem mm-hmm. though, brother, because she can't get it. What you just said about you know the apartment things. Here's the problem. She believes that she deserves a man who can pay for her rent. And it's really crazy when females say that, by the way, they want a man to pay for their rent. Now she's not moving. Like uh, what is worth the damn rent? What are you doing? This worth that ask Uh yourself that one basic question. It's just like, so they, their way of dealing with men is very exploitative, but here's the killing part about it. She believes that she's worth that because of her profession. Well, here's the problem with that. She doesn't work the job she has and she hasn't attained the profession that she has because she wants to be submissive. She has specifically attained the possession that she has so she can be defiant. Take a look at what she's done with her law credentials. Take a look at what she's done with her profession. Take a look at what she's done with her income. Every time you turn around, she's trying to flex it on you. She's not talking Mm -hmm. about it in a manner of saying, here's how I compliment a man. She's telling the man, here's how I can defy your authority. In the chat room, you're correct. What I call it, told y'all veto power. My job gives me the ability to veto any decision you might make. Because you see, my I haven't dealt with my damn daddy issues. So, and I'm worried that you're going to get up and leave. So, I need to make sure that I'm in control of the situation. And by the situation, I mean you. I need to be in control Uh of you. So if I can just lock the situation down, then I can trap you. So that's why they go hard in the paint to say, look, we need to get a marriage or a baby. Because she's like, you're too free. You're too free. I got to lock you down. You're too damn free. You could get up and walk away. Yeah, he could. And what she found out is, and he will. You can't trap Mm -hmm. no man. So that's why, that's what she was trying to do. Let me go ahead and lock him down. Yeah, y'all see her face. She don't look nothing the way she was looking at the breakfast club, did she? Mm -hmm. Oh, she wasn't looking anything like she was looking at the breakfast club, boy. When she's sitting there with the white dude, Oh, this is a whole different Ebony Williams here. Whole different one. Let me go ahead and give you the throwback. There she is on the breakfast club. All right. There she is on the breakfast club looking like a bulldog with a pink overcoat on. 
So she doesn't want, she doesn't see that as a position, something that she uses to be able to partner with under a man's program. She doesn't want to be under a man's management. She wants to manage the man. She wants to drive the car from the back seat. Because I guarantee you, if things are going well, she wants all the credit. If things go bad, she doesn't want any of the blame. But she'll sit up here and set it up. So, like I say, she is a textbook exercise in what not to do. Mm-hmm. Correct. And uh, one thing is, I've been there. I know you've been there as well. I had a woman straight tell me she felt like I would use money to control her. And I was like, well, you, you told me about this one. You could just stay here while you finish school and not worry about, you know, the big bill. But she felt like I could control her. And I was like, I'm just trying to help you out, <laughs> you know. And, and uh, it's crazy that how many of our women will just miss that opportunity. That you don't get one shot at that man that's willing to help you change your life because a lot of dudes got money will talk to a woman, but if he's head over heels, he will give her the world. He will make her life easier. But when women like Ebony, it's like every day it's a pair six brawl. It's like when women are combative like that, loud talking, always interrupting the guy when he's speaking. Those men aren't going to put up with that. Now, a dude who need a place to stay, yeah. That's all that she's going to attract. And I just think that a lot of these sisters thinking, oh, I got a degree. I got a degree in sociology. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. No, you're not doing it. If you still if you still have to pay for your own vacation and share a room with two of your homegirls in Miami, if you still – if you've got a bunch of dogs laying in your bed, if you don't – if you pay for every, like, uh, luxury that you have and you're doing it by yourself, have you really won? What has that? Not saying you can't get your degree or do anything for yourself, but that man wants to be a man, and he's not going to be with a woman who who try to fight his position as a man. Because I say this last thing, Jason, I'm out of here. What these women don't get is leadership as well. Is that that man is going to own up to it if things don't go right. Ebony won't because she's blaming everybody else for her for her messing up with men. Kim Kardashian, Lala, all these women that had rich men. Look how many rich men that Kim Kardashian messed with. Kanye was the only one that wanted to invest in her, knowing what she did in the past as well. Who else is lining up for that? Lala, who's lining up for that? You know, and so I just think these women just don't, get and they refuse to get in and these women keep lying to these younger women when and they keep lying to them and they keep messing them up for the future and the cycle continues but that's all i have jason and you guys have a good one b1 b1 brother thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight we appreciate that uh yeah men can see it dripping off of you when you're looking to challenge their authority and once that occurs, Lala Anthony was a disciplinary problem. Lala Anthony, y'all remember, her husband didn't like her doing all those naked scenes. He didn't like that. Remember? She talking about her acting career. She was going to show Carmelo that he doesn't control her. Well, congratulations. All it cost you was your husband. All it cost you was your husband. Now you the flyest, lonely old chick at the Met Gala. Call from area code 470. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Jason, what's up? It's uh, Michael from Atlanta. Michael from Atlanta. What's on your mind? Hey, um, yeah, um, I, I agree with your program. Um, you know, I, you know, I've dealt, uh, I've met people like Ebony K. Williams. I've actually followed her on Instagram. Um, yeah, she does have a lot of like masculine qualities. Um, you know, just she comes off as really dry. Um, I put it like that. But um, that was a statement. I had a question um for you um so I'm I'm dealing with people like Ebony K Williams in the workforce um you know they're all in that same age range and um they're like real toxic you know kind of trying to um what's the word like you know fill you out what's your situation you know they're all single and you know when you show that you're kind of just focused on your work right you know you're not really looking to you know do anything like that at work they kind of start going to self-destruct mode, trying to, you know, do like little conniving things to get you fired like that. And well, I mean, everything um, you know, for them is a competition. Become, guess, they don't want to partner with you. They want to dominate you. 
So every they're constantly replaying their childhood. So any man they meet, he's a target. You're not a man. You're not a person. You're just a target for them to take down. We got whole generations of them now. Feminism has just poisoned the well. It's completely poisoned the well. You're surrounded by Ebony K. Williams is everywhere. A bunch of women with bloated egos, grotesquely overinflated senses of self-worth. Their valuation of themselves is easily 20 times above what their actual market value is. The only person who can't see it is them. Because as far as they're concerned, well, as long as somebody's willing to bend me over, my value hasn't changed. And refusing to accept the reality that maybe your value is already taking a nosedive. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a caller from area code 401. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, how you doing, Jason? Okay, whoever you are, if you have your phone on speaker or on Bluetooth or something, you need to take it off. I'll give you five seconds to get that resolved. You done called up, and it sounds like you're about 20 feet away from your phone. Uh, sorry about that, Jason. Can you hear me now? Okay, what is your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Malik from Taunton, Massachusetts. Okay, Malik, what's on your mind? Uh, just what you said, great points from like the last two callers about the delusion and females just thinking because they're they have a nice cooch and boobs and butt think they can just grab any kind of man they want. And they act like the man's not going to know their history or their past. It's just unbelievable how they still live and try to emulate all these celebrities like Kim Kardashian, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B. Well, it's, it's like you're a regular hold, hold, person, your, you're hold your thought get. there. Hold your thought there for a moment. Don't lose your thought. I just want to interject here. They want it to be that way because when that's all you have to offer, you need that to be all the men want. So they want that to be the only thing that men want, because if that's the only thing you bring into the table, you need the fellas to lower the floor down to, okay, the only thing he needs from me is the, a slim waist, cute face, and nothing else. Then when the man says, no, well, and what about those, is your attitude as attractive as your exterior is? Now, there's where they lose the plot. Because they're most of these chicks today, they look good on the outside, but their attitudes are just unbearable. But go ahead. Very true. Very true, Jason. It's just who wants to deal with that? It's like, like you can't, it's like you said, you can't mold somebody that doesn't want to come, doesn't want to co cooperate with the program, you know? And just like some guys just are at the point now where it's just like these chicks are asking these ridiculous standards for guys, but they don't even want to improve themselves to match up with that said guy they want to get with so it's just like the guys are just walking away and especially now these chicks are feeling it when they hit their 40s and 50s it's not like, oh, oh crap I don't have a man I can't do anything what am I going to do now and then that's when they all start coming back well you know I mean then you have Steve Harvey telling them there's nothing wrong with them Steve Harvey yeah with, that doesn't with, help the just situation with, either understand what really hurts the situation Steve Harvey has an audience of millions. Shannon Sharp has an audience of millions. You put those two together, the video's already got, what, three, four million views on it? With these two guys Very true, telling yeah. these, gassing these women's heads up and telling them, yep, you're the table. The men need to qualify for you. And in reality, mathematically speaking, yeah. it's, it's, it's suicide. Very true, Jason. It's just, it's just crazy. It's just the men just let these women get away with this stuff, and then they wonder like why the women treat them the way they do because they keep pondering to them, and then they wonder why like they get screwed over. They're not opening their eyes and figuring out their worth because they're too they're too thirsty for the cooch, man. It's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, but just understand. I, I mentioned this last week. They're looking for somebody to victimize, and the young males today. The problem that the women have is the young males today are not like the dudes from the civil rights generation. The civil rights generation males didn't have a word for being a simp. They didn't have a word for that. They didn't have a word for red pill or exploitation. They didn't have a concept of being an alpha and being exploited. They didn't have a concept of that. This generation of young males has grown up with it. They've grown up with the word simp being part of their vocabulary. And now at the norm among the young men today is to push back against simpism, not to figure out how to accommodate it. That's the key difference. Television and the media hasn't caught up to this yet. So they go find some little Nas X looking dudes and, and 
let them sit up here and have other men smack them on the butt cheeks on TV. But those guys, Hollywood does not represent society at large. Hollywood doesn't represent society any more than Marvel Studios and the superheroes represent uh, your daily life at the job. It doesn't represent society at all. So they're way out of touch. And the reason I bring up Hollywood is because remember 30, 40 years ago, I told you all this here a couple weeks ago. You take a look on TV. Who was your masculine representatives? Archie Bunker, George Jefferson. You started seeing this turn after Father Knows Best and whatnot. Next thing you know, it becomes about the females flexing on the men and being disrespectful and talking down to the men and condescending and back talking and neck jerking and this, that, and the other. And that civil rights baby boomer generation took it and laughed because they were like, well, if that's the cost of getting some easy sex, we'll go for it. This generation ain't laughing at that. That's what's scaring them. Now, Red Fox talked back to him. Now, he, he wasn't like George Jefferson. He wasn't like George Jefferson. He wasn't like uh, Cliff Huxtable. But he was pretty much the only one. You can count him on one damn hand, the ones who wasn't taking it. And they made him the, the guy in charge of the junkyard. Well, it's better to be in charge of the junkyard than serving in, in the east side apartment in the sky on the Jeffersons. But my point is, these young fellas today, you're young men and already ain't having it. Already, you got a generation that didn't have to be taught this. They coming out the womb saying, hey, we ain't going for the simpism. So this is going to be a problem going forward. That ready audience that used to accept that disrespect and used to say the best we can hope for is some chick screaming and screeching in our ear, her demands. We don't have to accept that. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get Call America 601. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? <laughs> Hey, Jason, this is Cassandra uh, from Atlanta. All right, Cassandra from Atlanta, what's on your mind? Um, I just want to defend uh, Ebony. I don't understand why they coming down on uh, Ebony so bad because, I mean, black women have had to listen to, especially on YouTube, downing black women and everything. And why, when she say her preference, why, why are y'all coming down on her? Okay. Well, fir first of all, first that. of all, when you talk, how long has YouTube been in existence, ma'am? How long has YouTube been what now? How long has YouTube been in existence? Ooh, 20, 20 at least. Maybe 15 years or how long has it? I'm not YouTube, sure. YouTube. Maybe about 2007. YouTube started in 2005. Maybe. In 2005. So, okay. It's, so it's been YouTube, 18 years. YouTube is mm -hmm. old enough to drive. Right. Okay. Do you know how long ago Oprah was on, dominating the airwaves? Sally Jesse Raphael. The Mary Tyler Moore show. I can go d the color purple. Mm -hmm. I can go down the list. How Stella got her groove back. Yeah. Do you want to count how long ago that was? And but it's, it, oh, 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 okay. oh, oh, and they still get replayed today. They never stop getting played. They all those things are out there, and I'm just naming a few. And folks in the chat room, and maybe even more. Murphy Brown, we can go down the list, and they still get played today. They have been in constant, perpetual yeah. rotation now for 50 years, and you complain, yeah. and you're on my phone complaining about less than a decade of men pointing out the problem. Because the women weren't pointing out a problem. The women were just attacking men. The men, we're, we're pointing out a problem. So you ain't had an issue with the previous 42 years of unanswered yeah, abuse yeah. and pummeling that men have taken. You're upset because the men are saying something? Really? Is that a reasonable person? Yeah, well, I'm not upset because of that. I think. I think what has to happen is if the men want to lead, the men are going to have to be the financial leaders and they're going to have to accept all the responsibility as well. You can't okay, but for who? The, but, to, but for who? Ma'am, but for okay, who? Good. But 
for they have to accept responsibility for whom? For the women that they choose to be with. So what needs to happen is people need to stop the criticism. And if you really wanted to be married or whatever, then you choose the woman that you want to get with. Yes, ma'am, but that's the point. Strange women, but ma'am, and, that's the point. Type of stuff. Ma'am, that is the point, ma'am. Calm yourself down. Calm it's yourself down, Cassandra. Do not talk over the host. Calm yourself down now. Sorry. You ain't that drunk. I said they're going to take financial <laughs> responsibility and financially lead whom? Because the question that you and Ebony and all the rest of you who quote this, who vomit out this feminist dogma is that you all are not acknowledging that you are getting your market rate. You are getting what you qualify for. You don't qualify for a proper masculine leader. Proper masculine leaders don't go for women like Ebony. They don't go for women like Lala. And apparently they don't go for women like you either. No offense. But proper masculine men, proper masculine, you don't qualify for a proper masculine man. You qualify for Joe Lunch Pale who works at the brick making factory. That's what you qualify for. And you don't want to accept that men have a choice because men have standards. And if he's going to put his life and limb on the line, if he's going to be protector and provider and producer, he's going to want someone who's worth that level of sacrifice because that is a sacrifice. You talking about if he wanted to be a financial leader, fi financially leading is sacrifice that costs something. Well. And what you're saying is that you want to be able to give a man something, a reward that is grossly deficient and out of balance to the benefit he's providing. Ebony Williams does not qualify for a man paying for an apartment in New York City. We know that that's true because she couldn't hold him. Well, guess what? Now she's out here complaining about her inability to hold it without looking in the mirror and saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before I say another syllable to the men, am I the kind of woman that the guy who owns the bus company wants? Now that's the question none of you are asking. So Cassandra, you've heard Ebony's attitude. Mm -hmm. You see the way that she over talks men, ahem, over talks men. You see how non-feminine her behavior is. Do you think a man who makes $5 million a year, that that's the woman he dreams about being with after he's done all that work and accomplished all that? Do you think that's the type of woman he wants? I don't know. I don't know because I don't know Ebony personally, but I, just, I said, I you just take a, like I'll, Cassandra, I'll try this. No Cassandra, reason. I'll try this and one he, more time. I will talk to you if you're honest. I will not talk to you if you're intellectually okay. dishonest. I'll try this one more time because you know what you would expect okay. if you were making $5 million a year. Cassandra, do you yep. think that a man who works mm -hmm. 90 hours a week makes $5 million a year? Do you think that he's going to tolerate a female with Ebony's very masculine, aggressive, demanding attitude? Do you think that's what that man is set out in the world looking for? I think she already, yes. I think she already demonstrated that because the man was dealing with her for four years. Uh, been excuse ma'am and okay, after right, four go ahead, go ahead. he was dealing with her for four years what does dealing with her mean in a relationship with her okay what, what you mean he, sure uh, ma'am 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 ma cassandra okay. you're doing it again mm -hmm. you're doing it again yes you know full mm -hmm. damn well that that was not a good thing. You already knew you screwed up when you said he was dealing with her for four years. That's why you said dealing with her for four years. She might have been getting laid on top of for four years, but she wasn't building value with him. We know this by evidence of the fact that the first chance he had a chance to cut out, he did. 
So he was perfectly fine dealing with her as long as he could, quote, deal with her from a distance. It was only once she started demanding to get married, he showed you how much he valued marrying her. Because he didn't do it. If a man wants to value marry a woman, he going to go for it. And it won't take him four years. If it's taking him four years, it is because you've got unresolved disciplinary problems, Cassandra. Because a marriage costs a man far more than it costs a woman. Sleeping with her for four years ain't going to hurt him. Marrying her and making her uh, a beneficiary of his life, now that's a cost. So yeah, when you got a dude who's stiff arming you for four years, that tells us your quality of womanhood. You should be, four years is twice as long as you need to close the deal. And you sitting up here acting like that was some accomplishment. This is the silliness. These half a decade brides, these 10 year, these 10 year fiancés. Cause that's as far as they can get. I'm sick of that myself. I'm sure you I'm are. I'm sick of looking at that. Oh, are, are, you, a, are you a fiance? No way. Have you ever no been? Way. Have you ever been have one? In year two. Have you if ever? They don't, if they don't Cassandra, talk right have you two, ever been then one? Get in year three is old. Cassandra, have you ever been a fiance? Yes. How long have you been married? No, I've been. I've been a fiance. I've never been married. Oh, so you mean you and Ebony K. Williams are in the same boat? Pretty much. Well, not really. Not really. Okay, she's been a fiance, so but not married. You, she is. She's yeah. been a fiance and not married. Just, You've been a fiance and not married. You're both in the same boat. Mm, and the yeah, fa- and the fact case, that yeah. the fact that you're a decade older makes it worse. You're actually yeah, in a worse. Does, you're actually kind of me yeah. ass. You in a worse boat than she is. You've had the previous 10 years yeah. from your 40s to 50s to go ahead and fix your issues and patch that up. Yeah, but I'm not the one doing the choosing. The man has to choose. Ma'am, the there's and there's plenty and there's plenty of men out here choosing. Why is it you're not qualifying? Uh, I think it's the other way around. I think the men are not qualified as evidence. Cassandra, you know, you get what you qualify for. They're not ma'am. competent for leadership. Okay, so what you're saying is that you don't qualify for a competent man who leads. Exactly. I don't. I don't. And, and neither. I really don't. And neither does Ebony. Mm-hmm. And well, neith- and neither does Ebony's we- <laughs> Ebony's ability to argue for hours doesn't change the fact that she doesn't qualify for it. And that's where we disagree. I hate that that uh, she's having that problem, but okay, then there's like nothing to disagree with. Not have a code of okay. Go ahead. There's nothing to disagree with. If she qualified for it, she would have it. Yeah, but she doesn't do the choosing. The men have to choose. Okay, her. so the men who are are saying. there men who are competent and lead today? Yes. Why are they avoiding? Yes, why they are they avoiding you, Ebony? No, okay. ma'am. Why are they avoiding Ebony? I don't think they're avoiding Ebony. Clearly, it's they are. There are not enough men to. There are not That's enough a lie. single. That's a lie. That's a lie. To to choose from. That is a lie. I don't think they are. It doesn't matter what you think. I think it's not a lie. That is that is a lie, man. Two million less less men just to start off with. She's There's no Ebony, no, no men, ma'am. Men. Ebony okay, made good. herself available to all men. Her fiance was white. You apparently don't even have the basics on this. Her fiance was a white man. So she threw them legs, I mean, threw her options open to everybody. That fiance you've been sitting here talking about, he's a white man. So she hasn't limited herself. 
She literally sat there and told Iyanla that she's that she's done them all. Every race and color and creed, I've done them all. Yeah, she's tried everything. The men don't want her. It isn't that we don't know she's there. We, she's turned off the entire nation of men in one interview. Now, you don't do that if that's not the way you live. It took her one interview to yeah, show us all. We would that. never want to deal with that. I don't understand why everybody got so up in arms. I mean, if you made $3 million a year, common sense would tell you that you do not want a bus driver to be your financial leader. But the I'm point, saying, if you our, that's not our point. That's what I'm Cassandra, no. On YouTube. Cassandra, that's not our point. Our point is that a bus drop, your attitude as a female is what gives you your value and her attitude is pathetic. Her income and her profession, get drill this through your brick head, Cassandra. Her income and her profession and her credentials do not make her value. Her attitude and her demeanor and her ladylike disposition that is what gives a woman her value and ebony doesn't have any she is very masculine now you can't say that i don't think you can say that i mean intellect is valuable somebody that has the intellect to become a lawyer is is valuable in a family yes. sense no it is not your children who do you want your children to be college graduates when you want your children to be college graduates and be an attorney and learn from somebody smart. Okay. You don't need, ma'am. You know, no, Cassandra, Cassandra, you do not need Cassandra. You do not need a college. You do not need a college graduate or a lawyer to teach your children how to read with proficiency. But it helps. No, it doesn't. Having that kind of intellect. Cassandra, no, okay. it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. Okay, to you. It as long as you okay. are proficient, that's all you need. You don't need to be a scholar. Furthermore, scholars don't create scholars either. Jordan Peterson's daughter. Yes, they do. Jordan Peterson is a brilliant yes. psychologist. Some of his all right leanings to the side. Jordan Peterson's child is not a, a, is not a brilliant scholar. Dr. Phil is an otherwise competent individual. His racist leanings to the side. Same thing for him. I can go down the list. There's a whole bunch of people with all kinds of academic credentials. They're, they didn't create scholars of their children. And that's routine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I look that's, at it okay, day. that's Indian routine. And Asian, Indian and Asian societies have embraced education and their societies are way but better. But they don't need, okay, they, it doesn't need a they, scholar, they, but it doesn't require a scholar. Law school and medical school Cassandra, and else. calm yourself down, you bulldog. It doesn't require a scholar to do any of those things. So what you're trying to do is overstate it to try to prove a point that's already been debunked. All a woman needs to do is have proficiency. As long as she is proficient at reading the no, phonics and the 26 need to letters. No, and embrace education. So you're telling us that the no, only So you're telling us that the only people who can get a kid teach a kid to be college ready is a college graduate. No, but it Hang helps. up the That's phone. What I'm saying. Hang up the phone, Cassandra. Hang up the phone. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Good night. Uh, go back to smoking your crack pipe. Just get off the phone. Get off the phone. Tina, if you don't get your big jolly ass, stop trolling in the damn super chat. I'm the only fella y'all know who doesn't need folks to give me money like that. Tina, if you had anything to offer, you'd be with a man on a Friday night. You've been with me now for the last damn five years. So while you think you dispensing knowledge or wisdom, by the way, on a Friday and Saturday night, you, you, you've been with me for the last five damn years. You ain't even with Tony anymore. Calm yourself down in my super chat. Call America 321. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Jason. This is uh, Antoine from Orlando. Uh, yeah, I agree. Every point, you know, I would, uh, add 
to make it more simple, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, generally speak in the general sense, men are looking for a beautiful, um, sorry, women are looking for a handsome leader, and men are looking for a beautiful follower or someone that can follow directions. So, you know, all these women want men that can lead. Well, obviously the men that can lead want to want some woman that's not a headache, that knows how to follow and follow his direction. I don't understand why they don't get it. And let's look at her. She is beautiful. Um, what's her name? Oh, um, I mean, beauty but is, beauty is, a, I mean, beauty is a subjective thing, but go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Something you can walk around with and not feel embarrassed. You, you know what I mean? Right up, you know, right up until, this, right up until she opens her mouth. Exactly. And she's the type, as soon as she opens her mouth, you know how it is. You all fellas. You, you've been, you've been around a guy where he might have a beautiful woman and the way she talks and behaves, you look at him like, yeah, you need to control your woman. And she's uncontrollable. And you, and you know it's real bad when the white man dumps her. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just had to keep, keep it keep it a buck. And, you know, it, what really made me mad was she saw all this pro-black stuff. In reality, she was a swirler. And she was working at Fox News. You know she was bed winching up in that Fox News place. We, we, come on. We, you know that. You know she was smiling. Every white dude. I saw a picture of her. She was interviewing Bill O'Reilly. She was just a cheesing to Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, I mean, look, it, she thinks she snuck back over and she thinks folks ain't checked the paperwork. And then she found out folks checked the paperwork. So now she's trying to turn around and try to do a lawyer routine and try to argue her way out of it. And it ain't working. The real issue for Ebony K. Williams is everybody can see how phony she is coming in the door. She doesn't love black men. The contempt is just reeking out of her like a dumpster it's reeking out of her so she can't even pretend that she likes us so that that's the real reason is everyone can see from her words her body language the way she talks it's like baby no you, you you're a problem you don't respect black men you don't even like black men and the only thing you like a black man for is to punish him in place of your daddy and and if you had yep. the if you actually could get a white man to take you off the market, you'd be on top of him, under him, whatever. You'd already be there. The only real issue is things didn't go the way you was hoping they would go. I'll let you have the last you know, word. You were talking about oh, okay. You was talking about her mom. So I, I took the time to look up her mom. And sure enough, because she said she's a bus driver, she's a big girl, and she looked like she'd been a big girl for a long time. And she don't look like her. So I'm guessing she looked more like her daddy. So it looks to, it sounds to me, I'm just make, I'm just going to, it sounds like one of these handsome dudes that are broke and he was like trying to get some jump off and, you know, he left her with a baby. That's what it sounds like. When it, go, go look up a mom, you see what I'm talking about. She looked like a bus driver. Well, you know, I mean, and she's been angry about it ever since. She's been angry yeah. about it ever since. She's been mad about it ever since. She's looking to get even about it ever since. And men can see mm -hmm. it. Men can see it gushing out of her. That's the problem. She can't even sneak up on the man good. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a call from Air Code 757. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, um, I am TJ Randolph, and I'm calling from Dallas-Fort Worth area. Hello, TJ. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. Um, I've I wanted to call in. Can, can you hear me okay? Um, I am the 55-year-old 55, well, 55 woman that Courtney was talking about uh, you, when you had her on your show and you were asking about and she was telling you some of the women that she listens to or that she knows when you saw us on the Melanie King um, post. But the reason why I called in is because I did a review of, of this interview and what I find interesting is I, I agree with a lot of things that Yana Van Zandt said, and I gave my perspective from someone who used to be like that and who had to get my stuff together to get the the goal that I wanted, which was to be married and have a loving relationship. And what I find very interesting and disappointing is that women, particularly young women, talk about and they call women like me and women like young mammies and say that they shouldn't listen to older women because we're telling them to settle, to lower their standards. And I disagree with that. And I disagree with it because my husband, who's a truck driver, has been a truck driver for over 35, over 30 years. And he, by far, is the most giving, loving, 
commanding man that I have ever had in my life. And I've been married before to a six-figure guy. I've dated six-figure guys. So I really find it really disheartening that when women like my, my age who have made mistakes and who went down the wrong path, thinking we were, you know, we were bucking up, we were competing with men. I used to be in the military. So, you know, definitely I, I, I was that. When we're trying to tell you so you don't have to do it the way that we did it, so you don't have to waste the years of your youth, we get called mammies and tell them that, that we're leading them astray. And I just wanted to get your perspective of why you think that there is no respect for older women who are trying to help these younger women. Well, first of all, I think that they are suspicious because they're used, they recognize in their core that usually they're being lied to by older women. Usually older women are giving them unrealistic expectations and giving them a less than accurate vision of what they actually went through or what actually happened. So they make it sound a lot easier than it really is. So even in the case of Iyanla, she was, that's what I was saying. She didn't really give it to Ebony straight like Ebony needed it, which is to tell Ebony, you don't really qualify for the kind of man you want. That's just cutting to the quick. The, the reason why you're so upset and so hostile and frustrated is because you don't qualify for that man. It isn't that the men aren't ready. It's that you're not what they want. Now, that would be a whole different conversation to have, but females generally try to spare each other's feelings. Now, for the men, oh, it's a blood sport. It's bare knuckle. They never spare men's feelings. Oh, it's steel toe boots, kicks to the ribs. They never spare men's feelings. But amongst each other, you all spare each other's feelings. And so in, as a result, you all talk to each other, but basically you're talking around the issue. You don't actually talk to the issue, you end up just talking around it. And that's the way you all deal with each other. Now with the men, you're direct to the point. You ain't this, you ain't that, you need to do more, we make more money than you, we got degrees with each other. Well, you know, I mean, if you could just understand that sometimes you have to do things a little bit differently here now. Y'all don't do each other like that. <laughs> now, if you did, it would be a different situation. If you did. But it's just asking too much of you. I, th I think, I'm sorry. Is asking too much of you. Although I was curious about a couple of things here, though. Yes, sir. About your husband. You say he was a truck driver. Yes, sir. How long yes, have you, sir. How, long baby. you how long did you know him? Well, from the time we met to the time we got married, we had known each other for 10 months. And we've been together for five years now. From the time you met each other to the time you got married was 10 months. Yes, sir. Wow. And we've been married for five years. Come up on five years. Yes, sir. We, we've known each other for five years and 10 months. Well, I can only say congratulations to that. <laughs> 2017 was your 50, year. If, I met him at 51 and I'll be 56 this month. So again, and that is another reason, you know, again, I, I, I and I tagged you on it because I wanted to give you your kudos in the sense that, you know, I wasted a lot of time. I, I was kind of like a young, I was a, wasn't a great mom, you know, but I was a great dad. And I was teaching my daughter the wrong things. And I'm glad that she didn't do everything that I did. And she was able to get a hold of the fact of in her youth, met her husband at 23. Right, married but, and had well, a child, so. Okay. But I've, I've got some questions myself about a couple other things here. So congratulations on motherhood. I'm glad to see that uh, uh, at least that part went halfway decently. I was curious about a couple of things. What is the age difference between yes, you sir. and your husband? Two years. Not bad. Your husband is currently a truck driver. How long has he been a truck driver? Yes, sir. Uh, about 32 years. Hmm. So basically he's given his life to it. Yes, sir. And you never knew him before 2017. No, sir. I met him online and I reached out to him. How long have you been out the military? I retired in 2007, but I worked for the federal government. I retired from the federal government uh, in 2021. Mm -hmm. And I was a senior, uh, senior person in the federal government when I, when I retired. Well, glad to see that worked out for you. 
So she retired in 2007. She met him 10 years later. Mm -hmm. Does he have any children? He does. He has three. Are they still at home with him? And I, no, when we got together, his son was, uh, was a minor, but now all of our children are adults and we have grandchildren. Okay. Well, so far, so good in that sense. I'm glad to hear that's working there because there were some questions about that that I had previously before. I just thought all of that was rather Mm -hmm. interesting. You do understand that that constitutes a, here's the issue. Your story, while I'm very glad that worked out for you, you are a gross outlier. And you know that. That is correct. Your story is not typical. It's not mileage may vary. It is results will vary. You are the gross exception to the rule. Single mother over the age of 40? Come on now. In your case, you meant it when you were 50. You said well, you meant da- when you were 51. Was already on, my daughter was on her own. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it gone. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That literally <laughs> does not matter. It literally doesn't. Because the bottom line is, if a man wants to have a bond with you, he's going to have to meet them kids at some point. And even though they're not kids anymore. That's true. So as a woman, you don't care about that. That's true. Because women never care about that. But you're not going to be dealing with what he has to deal with. Because bottom line is, he's you retired. He's still working. Yes. You're retired. He's still working. Uh, so that just showed that that tells you a whole I, bunch of things right there. So what I'm saying is, as a woman, this registers registers to you radically different than it does for a man. Radically different. Yes. You're, nobody's expecting you to be the protector yes. and provider. He's not sitting no. around saying, "Boy, I'm so glad you got your pension." And it, I, I don't think you'd be with him if you did. Now, maybe maybe that's okay because it was kind of presented in a way in which y'all got a 50-50 going on. Now, no, would no, 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 would that, all. okay, would that be a fair way of categorizing your relationship is that y'all's relationship is 50-50? No, not at all. Okay. How you would know, you, we're partners, but I'm, I'm, the, ju- I'm the junior partner. <laughs> okay, junior well, partner. How, how would you categorize that that split? Well, interestingly enough, I answered your survey that uh, he pays 80% of the bills and does 20% of the housework. And what I mean by that, things that I don't do on a normal basis. And the truth of the matter is, I re- was able to retire because I had told him I wanted to and he, he said that I could. So, you know, you were able to retire it, because you're over the age of, you were able to retire because you're over the age of 50. Your ability to retire was not dependent on him. Well, again, you, well, it, okay. Oh, yeah. And I had invested in this. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying, though, I'm, 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 I'm saying your ability to retire was not dependent on him. He didn't need you this is true. to retire. That, that's, that's, that's a great cherry on top. But the bottom line is, you know, your ability to retire wasn't dependent on him. He is not, it's great that you went along with the program or whatever he wanted you to. That's great and everything, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a requisite. There's a reason I'm bringing it up. There's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you two live together now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you live? Okay, slow down. Now, do you live in a house or an apartment? We live in a house. Whose house? Our house. Wrong. We bought a house together. Uh, Wrong. Say again? Wrong. W-R-O-N-G. Wrong. So here's... Okay. here's it's his house? Here's where we hit problems. Whose name is on the deed? Both of our names. Yikes. Okay. How long How long have you owned the home? We bought it last year. You bought it at the top of the market. We'll we we'll leave we'll about. leave that with no no you didn't <laughs> you literally bought the top of the market oh yes we did I'm not gonna flog you I'm not we gonna flog you over that one but I'm just gonna say, man there's no this is mathematics okay we'll check back on you this is math this isn't even something to argue hey look if you're happy with it go ahead I can show you the I'm pa- just I can show you the, I can show you the paperwork <laughs> you like the paperwork <laughs> he's got to live with this y'all so it's, it's him living mm-hmm. with it but ma'am. 
you bought the house top of the market, but if it's not bankrupting you, then congratulations. Although I will tell you one mm-hmm. thing, how long is your, how, how long is your mortgage for? 20 years. What city are you in? We are in Dallas, Fort Worth. We're in Carrollton. You know where that is? I used to live in Plano. Okay. Well, then, yeah, you know where it is. <laughs> I could tell you about places that aren't there anymore. Carrollton's usually a place the black mm, folk. Okay. Carrollton's usually a place black folk don't want to hang out in. Barrel roll cop anybody. But in any case, um, just out of curiosity, what's the note on that thing? Twenty-five hundred. That's pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. We got it. <laughs> we, got, we got it. I imagine. So all told, you're going to be out of six hundred thousand dollars. Mm, I've already a less than that. I already ran the num, ma'am. I already ran the numbers. It's not going to be less than that. You're paying twenty-five hundred dollars a month. For a note of 240 months. That this is do y'all understand how many times I keep saying this one that this, this is math? This isn't an opinion. You bought at the top of the market. That's not an opinion, that's math. Your the payment is six hundred thousand dollars. You just said twenty five hundred dollars times twenty years mm-hmm. of payments is two hundred and forty months. Ma'am, I got a calculator. Okay. I'm literally sitting here calculating this okay. as you say it, and she said a little bit less than that. You need to run these numbers in a calculator. So you can actually see what you're paying, because apparently you don't know. Six hundred thousand dollars is the purchase price on that home. Now I'm not here to say whether the home is worth it or is not worth it. That's not the point I'm making. My point I'm making is, hmm, you bought a six hundred thousand dollar house at fifty five years old, twenty yep. year mortgage. That means the home will be paid off when you're seventy six. Yep. Who asked to buy this house? Say again? Whose idea was it to buy this house? Mine. Of course. It was my suggestion. Of course it was. Which is why I asked, whose idea was it to buy this house? (laughs) So you all understand something. Now that we've walked into this, let me give you the 720 degrees of analysis that you will receive nowhere else walking out of it. She said that she answered my poll to say that the husband is 80% the finances and 20% the housework. Whose house is this? Our house. Whose idea was it to get our house? Mine. So let me get this straight. It was your idea to get this $600,000 house and the husband takes care of 80% of the finances. So in other words, it's him Mm -hmm. footing this 600,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is a Lamborghini. Uh, That is a Lamborghini Aventador brand new. That is a, (laughs) the the new Lamborghini is the Revuelta, which by the way, I don't like it nearly as much as the Aventador. The seats were not nearly as nice as I would like, but yeah. Um, uh, then again, they're not supposed to be nice. So, but my point is, yeah, that's a Lamborghini Revuelta, the new one. Hell, that's an Aventador. I mean, there's new Aventadors going for seven hundred thousand. So what I'm saying is, about the, yeah, that is an ultra exotic car. Okay. In their fifties. And what I'm saying is, yeah, I, 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 I get it. I get it. And look, if your husband's cool with it, hey, if he's all right with it, that's perfectly fine. But just I'm just I'm talking to the other men listening right now. This is math I want you all to think over for a moment. It's one thing to be paying on a house note when you're in your 50s, maybe your 60s. But to be paying on ones clean into your 70s, there's there's no way you'll get any of the equity value out of it. I mean, you'll be by the time you get to that age, you won't need to be able to do that if you survive that, if you survive making the payments that long. So what I'm saying is she was the one who wanted a house. She wanted it. This man's older than she is. He's footing the bill for it. 
By the way, how many bedrooms does the house have? Three. How many bathrooms? Two and a half. How many people live in the house? Three. How many pets? One. There are three people in the house. You, your husband, and who else? Uh, my aunt came to, uh, we moved in, her in with us. She's 79. And congratulations to auntie. She's got free room and board, so she must have been an awesome aunt. She was and Gl- is. Glad to hear that. By the way, where was she living two years ago? My aunt? Yes. Oh, we just moved her here uh, in, in March. She was mo- lived in uh, Millington, Tennessee. I was stationed there, and she stayed there when we relocated. Okay. So your aunt didn't live in the state. She lived in Tennessee. Yes. Your husband, you and your husband got married five years ago. Your aunt has been in Tennessee all mm-hmm. this time. You mm-hmm. want to go buy a house. And you went to go buy a house, and rather than you and your husband living in the house by yourselves, it's you, your husband, and your aunt. Mm-hmm. And he's footing all the bills. Not all, no. He's footing the majority of it. Well... Yeah, he is the majority, but I, I guess that, that was a, an ex- well, did exaggeration. Y'all, did you all hear that? I, you know, did you I all hear that? He is the myself. majority, but ma'am, either he is or he isn't. Once again, this is math. I don't know what makes you think that you can argue or debate with math. We're talking numbers. This is either the number or it's not the number. Is it the number or isn't it? When it's time, to, majority of the bills, when yes. it is time, okay, whose bank account does the mortgage note come out of when it's time to pay it? His, yours, or do you both split it? Ours. I don't know what that means. What does ours mean? Uh, our bank account. What does ours? We have a joint bank account. We have a joint bank account. We have a joint bank account. Okay. Yes. That's nice to hear. Whose income are you depending on to fuel that? His and mine. Then it sounds like you now you're talking 50-50. No, I thought you asked who, whose money goes into the account. Both of our money goes into the account. Yeah, both of you. Okay, well, ma'am, then in that case, it sounds like you got a 50-50 relationship then. If the mortgage is being paid out of a joint account... In law, we call that commingling of finances, which is okay. why which is why you just said, "Oh, what? Well, it's both of our money." Oh, okay. Well, then now that's fifty fifty. Then, when you, how much was the down payment on the house? Uh, fifteen percent. Who cut? Okay, I mean a, a numerical figure. Uh, fifty thousand. All right, who 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 stroked that check for fifty thousand? I did. So you put up the fifty thousand dollars to buy the house all by yourself. Yes. So your husband did not because contribute any of the money to put the fifty thousand dollars down that house. And yes, I know you're ex military. I get that, but somebody got to put some money on it. So you're saying that you put $50,000 down to buy that house? Yes, from the house that I sold. So you had a previous home, you sold it, and you're saying you used some of the proceeds to put a down payment on yet another home? Yes. So how long did it take, how long of a note did you have on the previous house? 30 years. So in other words, when you get done, you will have done 50 years of house payments. <laughs> okay. You will have done yeah. half a century, your entire, as long as you've been alive right now, you will have done all of that. Well, I, I was only in the, I was only in the other house for four years. So I don't, it's not 30 years. No, we were only, I was only in the house for four years. Okay. Before, when I met him. So you're saying you're only in the house for four years and then you sold it. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
that's a lot of that's still a lot of house paying to do now we got two houses here well i sold it and used some of the money for that which mathematically speaking <laughs> there's not going to be a whole lot left over unless we got really really lucky she's going to claim she got really lucky by the way and i don't even have to ask oh i did I, everything i do is great all right i i got it yeah Right. No, no, but we were we were fortunate enough to buy the home from a friend who was getting married and was is moving. So we were we were fortunate to do that. That that that's very fortunate. I'm very glad to hear that. In any case, here, um, that's still that's going to be a fair amount to stroke. There, she put fifty thousand dollars down on it. He didn't have to put anything in there. That's great. That's the sweet spot of stuff. Let me tell you, if you're going to do such a thing. By the way, when did you sell the other house? Uh, we sold the well. I sold the house um, November twenty twenty one. Yikes! Yeah, because we moved in December. Yeah, because we moved in December twenty twenty one. So yes, we've been here about a year. Awkward. Well, over a year actually. They got married in twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. Well, twenty eighteen. No, we got married. We got married in twenty nineteen. We met in twenty uh, seventeen. Okay, that'd be you. No, no, no. We got met. We met in. We met July 2018 and got married May 2019. Okay, that'd be four years. Yeah, we then. met. That'd be four years then. We'll be. I said we'll be married four years together, five years, because okay. we met in July of 2018. Before the number was a little bit different. I I even said it. So, but the bottom line is okay. The number is we've known each other for five years. You've been married for four years. Uh, yes. Yeah. You had a house that you already owned when you met him. You sold that mm-hmm. house after you two got a couple mm-hmm. of years after you two got married. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have a house to sell. No, he'd already sold his house. When we met, he was living in a condominium, so he'd already sold his house. Okay. Uh, a condo in Atlanta or Dallas or... Memphis? No, 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 here in Dallas. Okay. You know where Farmer's Branch is, the uh, area? Um, yes, even though they're doing a lot of changes, but yes. Um, here's mm-hmm. the issue, and I shouldn't say issue, but here's the thing I'm taking a look at there. Like I say, that's a lot of changes to make over a very short period of time. You bought one house, immediately jumped out of that one. Let's go buy another one. She put the $50,000 down. Yikes. First of all, she had a house when she met him. <laughs> First of all, she had a house when she met him. Yikes, number one. Second of all, she wants to immediately go buy another house and you put both of your names on it, correct? Yes. So he went from, now was he renting his condo or was he, did he own it? He was renting. So he went from renting and not having any debts now he's got six hundred thousand dollars of debt at fifty eight years old. Mm-hmm. So may, may I say two, something? two years ago, let me just repeat this again. So two years ago, mm-hmm. he was renting, he was relatively debt free, was probably paying a lot less than twenty five hundred dollars a month. Cause he's in Dallas and that's going to be a hard thing to pull off $2,500 a month in Dallas. He had to be posh, posh. So and that's ain't, that's not happening. He was probably paying a hell of a whole lot less than $2,500 a month. Now they got a foot, a $2,500 a month payment for the next 20 years. He went from owing nothing for where he lived and just taking it as he goes to now he's $600,000 in the hole. Because he's liable for this. His name is on that title. So now this is his liability along with yours. But the bo- the bottom line is it's yes. his liability now. So if yes. any if he wanted to live in a twenty five hundred dollar a month place, he'd have already had that. He didn't have a twenty five hundred dollar a month place. He had something that fit him and his life. You refused to move into his condo with him. You sold the house that you were living in specifically so you could get married and say, okay, I want to buy a new house. And now he's along for the ride and the liability. 
And I'm just, I'm, if he's okay with that, and I don't know if he is or isn't, I haven't talked to the man, but what I will say is mathematically speaking, this relationship is very advantageous to you. Very, not a little, very. Okay. He's 58 so years, he's 58 <laughs> years old and been walked off into $600,000 of debt. Whereas before he didn't have Can I say any. something? Yeah, go ahead and try to clean this up. No, I'm not trying to clean it up. You know, this is this is my life and this is our choice. And I, if he didn't want to do it, we wouldn't have done it. Not my point true. Is, you know, I, not to what, true. To, to what you say not again? Tr- not say true. Again? Not true. But go well, ahead. Well, if, may I continue? Um, and my husband has been on my channel. We've talked, you know, very candidly about things. Because, again, my goal is to try to help women not wait as long as I did. And to learn from those mistakes. So um, this is not for everybody. And I know that our, my situation is an anomaly. And I know it's my outlier. But I, I try to share so you won't end up being 51 and trying to find love. But, you know, it works for us. And this man loves me. Hmm. He provides for me. He, takes, he protects me. He He's protective does. of me. He's everything that I wanted and needed and took me a long time to find so I, I don't I understand what you're saying I'm not disagreeing with it and it's and your viewers say I ruined him well if, if he doesn't think I've ruined it I really don't give a crap what y'all think but well, she's getting it, she's getting in her I've feelings T minus 10 T minus six seconds Whitney whiskey huh? no it took her about I four mean, more seconds to no. get in their feelings well, no, no. Right. It took her, but took her a few no, extra he, seconds to get in her feel, in if, her feelings. If he doesn't think I ruined him, that doesn't, that doesn't, it doesn't matter what you all think. Well, here's the real thing: um, it does matter what other people think if they're the rational ones in the room. So, but if it, they're not living in our in our relationship, if they're not living in our lives, it doesn't. They okay. don't have. A, you know, you know what? They don't have a stake in the game. Is what I'm you saying. You know, you know what? I think that's a very interesting way of phrasing that by the way would you say that somebody who was incarcerated in san quentin that all of us free folk out here that our opinions don't matter because we're not living their lives well this is not i'm not in, in let me I try this to sec- me, I think second i didn't i didn't ask you that i'm asking you an objective separate question second time would you say to the person who is doing a life sentence in the penitentiary, if they heard us out here in the free world talk about him, would you say that our opinions don't matter because we're not living their lives? Would you say that one more time? Because I'm not sure I'm following. Would you say that our opinions of somebody who's doing a life sentence when we're out here free don't matter because, well, we're not doing a life sentence with them, so it's not our lives? Well, I would say it, it, it matters to a degree. Why? Because I would wonder why they would be in San Quentin. <laughs> No, and, you and wouldn't. It could, it could affect me. What you would say is, how in the world can you say our opinions don't matter? None of us would want to trade places with you. Because you're in a okay. very disadvantageous position. So you see, it's one thing if we wanted to trade places with you, then our criticisms would not matter. But if we're saying, whoa, glad we dodged that bullet. Well, yeah, if somebody's made smarter decisions or wiser choices, then uh, their decisions actually do matter because then things become a cautionary tale. Now, I'm not telling you to go sell your house and I'm not telling you all to make any choices. Uh, Certainly, I am not saying that whatsoever. So I would not advise you to make any alterations based on anything that we said here. My job is simply to put a spotlight on the things that people are seeing. So I'm glad if you're, uh, I know that you're okay with it because we see this all the time. We, most of the houses bought in America today are at the behest of females. I've already gone through the articles about that. The fee, the housing crisis right now is being fueled by women. Guess what? The one in 2008, that was fueled by women too. 
a lot of black women, y'all know there's a PBS Frontline special, uh, Money, Power, and Wall Street. You can look it up on YouTube, PBS Frontline, Money, Power, and Wall Street. They went and went to Atlanta, which is one of the major epicenters that started the 2008 subprime financial uh, mortgage crisis, driven by black women overpaying based on emotional decisions. Now, here we are, 14 years later, and we're hearing the exact same rationales. Because here's the thing, if you're running by a CPA, I'm I'm wondering if a CPA would advise somebody to take on a $600,000 financial obligation in their 50s. Uh, Or would a CPA tell those people to downsize? Hey, you need to be making a financial bulwark, not, not taking it on. So, and look, I'm, I'm, that's for you to make your decision about it. You're retired. Uh, certainly you can use your funds however you choose to. The lesson here is for the men listening. I want the men to listen. There's no question, TJ, that your marriage is very advantageous to you. There's no question that you like the, hell, if I was a female, I'd like those terms. If I was the woman in the relationship, hell yeah, I'd like those terms. Yeah, this sounds great. Yes, it's very advantageous for you. So that was the whole thing, the whole point I was making to Courtney before. I was like, by the way, if you talk to TJ, I wonder if I asked some questions about how the situation broke down. I wonder what I would hear. And yeah, I figured I would hear something like this. That's what I thought I was going to hear. Something like this. So, like I say, I mean, certainly, um, I'm assuming he's in good health. I certainly hope he stays there. Hope he lives to 120. So I certainly want that to be the case. I don't wish any ill. I absolutely do not want that (laughs) whatsoever. I certainly don't want to see you fail. We got enough black folk failing. We don't need to see any of that nonsense. Absolutely. I just thought it would be a good opportunity to ask some more in-depth questions to find out exactly what the situation is. So I certainly thank you for your candor. I think that's all very, very helpful. Sure. You've made a point that you want to advise young women of the circumstances and situations to yeah. avoid when they're younger. Absolutely. Because it's a hell of a thing and to I'm be glad trying that my to. My daughter got. It's a hell of a thing my, to try to wrestle, wrestle yeah. a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage. You know, in your fifties, that's a hell of a thing <laughs> to do. That. That I mean, that is a beast. That's that's a woolly mammoth. That's a beast to have to to wrangle that thing. You know, in your fifties and whatnot. So for a young woman to be able to avoid that, that's great. Uh, what is the advice exactly you would give them? Well, the, the advice is with respect to um, our attitudes and how we approach dating and, and how we overvalue ourselves in the sense of what we are, quote unquote, bringing to the table. And, you know, cooperation is key um, because if I had the same attitude that I had you know, in my earlier years, a lot like Ebony K, Mr. Randolph wouldn't go for that, you know, and there's no way, you know, that's why I put in your chat, even though my husband doesn't make $5 million a year, he still wouldn't want to deal with that. If he had to come home to me being that kind of personality and he would, he would want to stay out on the road. And, and my goal, every time my husband leaves me is to want him to hurry. So he wants to hurry up and get back to me. So that's, that's what I share. Oh, and that, don't be uh, a, you know argumentative. That, that's a great place to be in. If he wants to get back home, that's that's certainly where you want to be at. He can say hello to you and your aunt. Uh, I do want to find out here though for the young women <laughs> who are uh, listening to your advice on that and whatnot, because um, you, you mentioned about your uh, daughter before, and how old is she? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She'll be twenty nine next month. Is she your oldest? She's my only. She has three children. I have one. Okay. And um, so you had her when you were 25, 26? 27. Okay. 27. She met her husband at 23. Uh, they got married. We had our wedding. We, we got, had our wedding, excuse me, August 2019. They had their wed- wedding June 2019. So they got married tw- two months before we had ours. The reason why I came up before with Courtney was because, first of all, uh, Melanie King is a major, major screwball, but I'll put that to the side. 
Um, they, she had tagged you in a post along with some other people there. And it was to have a round table of women. Uh, by the way, did that ever get kicked off? Uh, it was supposed to happen this week, but she postponed it to next week. Maybe she's looking for a soul. I don't think she'll find very much though. But in any case, <laughs> I'm very glad to hear that you all are uh, getting along swimmingly there. Although I would advise you to find better company. But in any case, um, the reason was because when they're talking about holding a round table and whatnot, the real issue there was who has the ability. If there are no competent men involved, then generally what you end up with are a bunch of females sitting around trading misconceptions with each other because you think you know what it was that attracted got your husband to get over the finish line to marrying you your husband actually knows what it was so if you were to have a discussion with that like i say it's not about oh he told me uh, they might be hearing something a little bit different so if they don't have men involved in these situations that's where it goes off the rails i think the women have a lot to learn Uh, i just don't know how much putting into the other side of teaching they have to learn here. Cause my thing is even in your situation here, and I'm glad to know that you got married and whatnot, but by your own admission, you got married after 30 years of uh, 30 years of stumbling around. Right. And what I'm saying is (laughs) things don't get fixed overnight like that. And certainly as you get older, how many changes Mm -hmm. can a 50 year old woman make? Uh, only if she really wants to. And I will say I, I was kind of like Iyanla. I didn't lose everything, but, you know, I almost lost my mind and I almost lost my life. So, um, How so? It required me to do. Um, I was in a relationship that ended violently. And um, why were you violent? Had my brother not. He was violent <laughs> to me. You were um, was and had my were, brother not was been he there, in the military? I, I might not have made it. Was he in the military? No, he was not. How long did you, now? Was this your husband or who? No, it was a, a guy that I was uh, dating. We hadn't been dating very long, uh, maybe about six months. But yeah. So you were dating a guy for six months. Mm-hmm. You was dating a no, head. not my baby. My, you was hate you were dating a, you were dating a head buster for six months. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know he was a head, a head buster. Let's let's not, not say that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of did. There, there's head busters don't. No, I didn't. Head busters don't sneak up on you. Head busters are that's where they at. So it's they up front. Furthermore, how long was you were dating this guy before you met your husband? Uh, I met my husband a year later. Oh, so later. you were 49. No, this happened with this person. I I was 50. I met my husband at 51. Okay. 49 or 50, man. It's splitting hairs, but fine. You were 50 when you were with Mr. Headbuster. <laughs> yes. Right. So this wasn't a, so this wasn't a young foolish female who doesn't know men and can't size them up and doesn't have a lot of experience. You're right. This is a, this is a very experienced older woman at this point in her life. And she's got exactly what she wants. You can't well, pull. You can't honest, really. I've said it, I've you said can't it really I was pull. A woman. You can't really pull anything over on her and deceive her at this point. So at fifty years well, old, well, like I said, I was a. I was TJ, a desperate woman. Calm, and that, calm that, down, that, TJ. That's calm down, part. TJ. We don't talk over the host here. Mm-hmm. Calm down, TJ. Sorry, we don't, we don't talk over the host here. Sorry, it's my job to put these things and articulate them in their proper context. The fact that it is uncomfortable to hear doesn't change the facts or the mathematics. Mm -hmm. You got a real one woman war going against math. And I'm like, eh, you might want to back off the war against math. It never ends well for the person fighting one plus one. Um, At 50 years old, we ain't (laughs) pulling any wool over your eyes. You know what that man is. You see what that man is. He's offering something where the benefit is worth you walking into it. Now, here's where women tend to get dishonest. 
And this is why we mm-hmm. advise them not to listen to older women. Because you see, the older women will now start talking about their feelings. So they're probably going to say something along the lines of, well, he wasn't like that when we met. I was in a bad place. I had just gotten out of a bad relationship. I was lonely. It'll probably be something like that. Right? No. Oh, good. Because you just said a few moments ago you were desperate. That goes along with lonely. But I'd like to hear how desperate is different from lonely. Well, I'm just, I was desperate because if I would have not been desperate, I would have acknowledged the red flags. And again, I've talked, I'm very candid on my show about the things that I did wrong. And if, because I say out the gate, within meeting him, I knew I should have walked in the opposite direction and didn't. Okay, but there was something about him you liked because if he was a homeless bum saying, hey, can I get $50? You would have kept walking. Obviously, there was something about him that was good enough to enter a relationship, so let's not overlook that. Well, the aunt, I mean, like I said, it was desperate because, again, at this point, I'm 49. I was 49 when I met him. My options were minimal. So my daughter was going on her own. So that that's the Okay, what you're saying, what you're trying to tell the world right now is that this man had no redeeming characteristics and that's why you got in a relationship with him. He said, Hey, he you want cute. hey, you want a boyfriend? And you said, All right. He was cute. Okay, he obviously had you to know, be more did. than he obviously had to be more than cute. And this he is why cute. we don't want these older women participating or hosting these things because they're dishonest. They won't even just level and say what it was. They keep trying to clean their resumes up as they walk along. She's defying mathematics. There's no way you got with that guy at 50 years old just because he was quote unquote cute. Obviously you had to have a conversation. Obviously you had to have some points of commonality. Otherwise there is no reason to be with him unless he was just a one night stand every time you saw him. Well, that's what I'm talking about. There were there were things that I chose to ignore because when I there there was no commonality. You know, those were things that I chose to ignore. No, no, no. Other than and being cute, the, when you two got on when you two got on the phone with each other, what did you talk about at 50 years old? Talking about the, you know getting to know each other like I did with my husband. Right. But again, and obviously there, he there was, was obviously there was something were, there because you you stayed with him for six months, so it wasn't like there was nothing there. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gotten past the first phone call. So obviously, you all had some things in common that allowed you to start bonding with each other. Didn't say it was a deep bond, but it was enough to get something started. By the way, what was the age difference between you and him? Two years. He was younger than you? No, he was two years older than me. Okay. So once again, just like your husband. So yeah, there's there's not a lot yeah. to do there. What did he do for a living? He worked in, uh, he was like accounts payable or something like that. Okay. Well, so far, so good. So far, so good. So like I say, definitely he had some redeeming characteristics. You're just telling the world all he was was cute. And you're saying he didn't have anything else that attracted you to him other than, well, he was cute. Well, uh, I will. (laughs) You know, when I look back on it, that's all that I could really say, because no, the sex wasn't great. Somebody put sex. No, it wasn't that. Uh, This is called character. This is called character destruction. When a female does not want to face what she's done, what she does is try to erase the man. So she characterizes him as being the son of the devil, if not the devil himself. And then they start Mm. saying irrational things like, I got into a relationship with a guy for six months, but there was nothing redeemable about him. Well, he was cute, but there was nothing else. He wasn't smart. He wasn't engaging. He wasn't charming. He wasn't sensitive. He didn't have any redeeming characteristics except he was cute. When we got on the phone, what did we talk about? Well, we kind of just spelled our words to each other for six months. (laughs) And this is why we cannot let these older women host these forums because you all are going to just lie to people. 
What you're saying is irrational and impossible. You did not get with that man for six months because all he had was cute and you 50 years old. Your ovaries didn't even work anymore. Cute wasn't going to produce nothing for you. At 50 years old, you looking for somebody with more. You've already had 30 years prior to that. 30 years prior to that to know how men operate and move. You wasn't going for a cute at 50. You were going for potential at 50. So when you sit up here and try to destroy this man and claim he didn't have anything except he was cute, that's nonsense because what you would say okay. is that your judgment was so poor that you choose men who have nothing. Well, by definition, you couldn't have recovered in one year. All of a sudden, ooh, I got good judgment now. That That's mathematically impossible. Impossible. You might not be proud of him. You might not be proud of the way it turned out. But that man had other redeeming characteristics. He had other redeeming okay. characteristics. You just don't want to claim them now. And I will okay. say one more thing. When a female is this obviously blatantly dishonest and mischaracterizing things. <laughs> it's like, boy, you got to wonder what else she's not saying now. And this is the reason why we say, Hey, y'all just really need to fall back and take a back seat and let us, let us, the, the men lead these discussions. Cause we're going to get to the heart of it and get to the real. We going to get there. You all are going to try to rehab your history and sanitize your history and fabricate it into something it wasn't. Well, I will say this. Maybe I'm not articulating, articulating it effectively. Yes, but, you did. Um, I'm sorry? Yes, you did. You articulated it just fine. I'm, because, again, it, it was not about him. It was me because, like I said, there were red flags from day one. And I chose to ignore them because you, because you like the you know, there, there were liabilities, but there are also benefits. So either you like the red flags well, or you like or the benefits outweigh the liabilities. That's simple well, math. Well, I, well, I will say this: what I because one of the things that made that made me consider him is because, like Ebony K, I was you know I had these standards of what I thought I should have and who I should be with, and I said, well, let me quote unquote lower my standards, let me not be as, maybe you don't have to be this type of person. You don't have to have this kind of job and you don't have to do. So I bent, I bent. And I said to myself, you know, because I knew I, at the time I had a very um, a, a aggressive personality. And so I said, well, there maybe this guy's just not going to let me run over him because he started talking to me crazy at the onset. Well, cursing at me and stuff like that. So, so he, yeah. so this man just calls you up. Hey, you old funky BBB. Pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. He was cursing at me. Yeah. Pretty quickly. This is pretty the, quickly. this, this phone call right here, that response she just gave. This is the reason you cannot, the older women just need to bow out and get out of the conversation because they're just going to lie to people. This man did not call you up cursing you out like Red Fox. He did not do that. Now, you might have thought that his temperament wasn't where it needed to be. But this man, you never did. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, you old funky ass. Blankety, blank, blank. That never happened. That never occurred. Now, what you just did, that's criminally dishonest in an age where young women need to have solid information. And you're sitting up here trying to rewrite your past in real time. This is irrational what you're no. saying. This is a hideous disservice to young women. They need to get the damn real. They need to know what you were doing wrong because you were doing they, things because you were doing things to that man that made him respond to you later in a way he wasn't responding to you at first. You were doing things that violated his tolerance and you're not saying anything about that. What you're telling the world oh, is I, you were a I, model I, no, citizen. No, no. Yes, sir, you were a model citizen no, and he was damn me Conan no, the sir. Barbarian. No, sir. No, sir. That's not true because I've also said some of the things I did wrong that I learned being a control freak was when he, just to give an example, when he would unload the dishwasher instead of me being, thanking him for unloading the dishwasher, I want to point out everything he did wrong. So, no, I'm not saying I did everything right. Not absolutely I didn't. 
Absolutely, I did. I'm pretty sure it went. Those are the kind of things. I'm pretty sure it went way further than just unloading a dishwasher. But that that um, was that was just an example. I'm just talking about my. I was yeah, okay. I'm I'm was, pretty I'm pretty sure that it became you getting up in his face. Now that I am absolutely certain about. I'm sure it was you getting no. up because you're ex-military, and I'm sure it was you getting up no. in his face. I'm certain no. I am beyond certain of it. Well, here's the thing. I don't I don't deny I have gotten in men's faces. I there don't deny go. that. And I, again, I'm very candid about the things that I've done in my life. But in this particular situation, no, I didn't. And there were Pete and again, my daughter, I did a show with my daughter who talked about the things that she saw, how she saw someone that she didn't recognize because she, she didn't recognize me. Cause we all so, know, no, cause we all I'm know pathetic. single mothers, daughters don't just gang up with everybody. We all know that doesn't happen. Whether mom well, is right, whether mom is right or wrong. Show, any, anybody that's watched my show, they know my daughter has kept, has been very honest, brutally honest about the things I did and didn't do right. Well, brutally here's honest. the thing. Your daughter is, but the man hasn't had a chance to have his say. Now, if I was talking to that man that you were with for six months, I wonder if I would talk to him and hear a man who he ain't got a damn thing going for him, except he's cute at 52 years old. He's 52 and all he got going for him is cute. He's going to open his mouth and start sounding like Kodak Black. I don't. Yes, think... I was married to my daughter's father. OK, I'm talking about Mr. Six Months. So do not read the no, chat. Someone room. Was you're in the you're, chat. I'm you're sorry. unfocused. Now, this is a disciplinary problem, too. You're on the phone with a man and you're paying attention to other things. <laughs> that's not a good sign. Just a okay. thank you note there. But that's not a good sign. Disciplinary problem. This man was not sitting here talking to you and sounding like Migos when he took, picked up the phone for you. That is not what was happening. That did not occur. Something else was going on. Because if a woman's got 30 years and you had a baby daddy, but you didn't have a husband. 30 years, that's plenty of time for plenty of men. And she's going to get what she wants. If she's bringing it home, that's what she wants. An old dude had some characteristics you liked. He also probably had some boundaries that you were like, hey, I'm used to pushing boundaries and pushing buttons. I don't disagree with that. Okay. And now we're going to sit up here and destroy this man's character and say, yeah, I like no, to. No, I'm not going like to. I like to push. Sorry? I like to push buttons. Now, let me all tell you about this fellow who's a son of a bee. Wait a minute. See, that's the thing that's not cool. That's not okay. That right there is so super not okay because it's not an honest picture of him. But most importantly, it's not an honest picture of you. And you're going to teach the young females when on my phone tonight, you are completely fictionalizing your recent past. No, I don't, I don't see it that way, but okay. You literally just told us all what it was. You literally just did it. I literally just, I literally just sat here and dissected it, literally. And she's saying two plus two does not equal four. It equals six, eight, nine, not four. And what I'm saying is young females don't need that. Young females need the real. Young females need the real. They need the real, and the real doesn't start with, oh, be more agreeable. And, oh, you know, just rub his back when he gets home that isn't what they need to hear they need to hear you know what well, I, don't, uh, I don't think I, the I don't biggest do that. the biggest issue that females have today is a complete and utter refusal and lack of accountability that's number one probably number two and three and this is the conversation that women don't have with each other because they are allergic to holding themselves accountable. Accountable means the conversation starts and ends with you. That's accountability. Accountability oh, is not the conversation it. starts with you and then let's do you out to me. It was aggravating you. So this is the reason why we, no, we can't let the older, these older women can't lead these discussions. They just can't. They just can't. 
This is what they all do. They all do this right here. They all do this. And the young women just get misled. And we don't have enough older women to sit down and say, hey, look, I was a damn disciplinary problem. I get in niggas' faces, this, that, and the other. Some of them didn't take that mess. But I do. But I do tell them that. I do. Okay, then if, if, you're saying, if, you're, that. if you're saying that, then that also needs to include, by the way, I was with a guy for six months, and he was a pretty good dude. He's pretty affable as well. But I also, I'm pretty slick at the mouth. And one day he showed me that he's not the one for that. <sighs> Blog talk is doing its thing there. That was upsetting. That is upsetting. See if I can try to get that thing to reconnect here, but uh, for some reason it disconnected. See if I can get that to go back on there, but uh, yeah, the young women, this is this is why the young women got to talk to the men. The young women got to talk to the men. If we, if we let them talk to the older women, that's, that's what occurs. That's what happens. The older women get a hold of them and that's, that's it. It's a wrap. You're done. You're done. They're not going to get anywhere. They sit here and stuff and then the women are not going to hold each other accountable. They're going to go down a list of red pill talking points, but they're not going to hold each other accountable. They're not going to do that. They're not going to sit there and say, hey, we need to get ourselves straight. They're not going to do that. They're not going to say, hey, here's where we messed up at as individuals. You know what? He was a good guy. I probably turned a bunch of good men bad. That's the conversation that doesn't occur, which is, hey, by the way, most of these fellas were probably not bad apples. I'm probably a bad female who's hooked into bad black female culture and I turned good men bad or at least I brought out the worst in them. That's the conversation that doesn't occur. That these were probably good men and they brought out the worst in them. And to sit here and talk to other females, not about, well, here's how you can be more agreeable and recognize that, you know, men see things different, process different. Whoa, no. Were you a disciplinary problem? Were you an ass? Were you sitting here causing problems? By the way, I think I got blog talk back up and going. If you're on the line, you can just stay there. If you're not, you probably have less than a minute. You probably got less than a minute here, about 30 seconds. Like I say, I'm not sure what happened with them. Sometimes that happens. We get a bunch of folk and it kind of jams it, I guess. But uh, you got a little bit of time here left. At least I think you do. At least I think you do there. Let me see. I think you got a little bit of time left. No? I said, yes, they do. I might be wrong. I might be wrong because I don't see the call sign on there. That I'm seeing one thing, but I don't see the call sign on there. So I may be wrong. It's probably not going to take any more calls at this point. Apologies here, like I say, because I'm called in. I've called into it right now, and I don't hear anything. So apparently, it's had some issues with that. All right, let me go ahead and cut that off then not really sure what happened with them sometimes they get late so one of these days we'll have to find a better protocol than that but in any case uh thank you very much for giving us a call tj we appreciate that i mean it's good to have an opportunity for folks to hear exactly how these things occur and exactly how they go down i've got a bunch of guys who are on this program right now they are in their late 30s their 40s or their 50s and you can hear for yourselves you can hear for yourselves hey did that sound like a good deal to you 58 years old and just bought a $600,000 house. Does that sound like the lick to you? Does that sound like where you'd want to be at? Hey, that's something for you to think about. And she grabbed her last train leaving. So, I mean, good for her. Good for her. She grabbed the last one leaving. So, good for her. She was able to do that. 
for the young females out there, just understand how this game really goes. The older women are not really going to tell you what it is. They're not going to tell you what it is that they could have left the casino way before now. They're not telling you that part. They're not telling you that, by the way, I was with men who were doing right by me, but if I can't be pleased and I'm dealing with a bunch of issues of my own, they're not resolved. I'm going to tell you that he's the worst damn thing walking. He's the worst damn thing walking. That's what they're going to say. But I want you to go back and review this again and tell yourself whether or not that makes sense to you. You think that over. You think that over. A man in his 50s here, like I say, you're up in his face and you're getting slick in the mouth and whatnot. Just understand, it's like, okay, you're taking chances. You're taking chances. And I want the young women to understand. By the way, did y'all see how long it took me to get to that? I want you to understand that part. She didn't just give it up like easy. She, she made me work for that. She didn't sit up here and come out the gate saying those things. You see, if I hadn't lived as long as I have and I'm questioning everything as much as I do, she was going to tell you, oh, this guy was terrible. He was awful. He was abusive. It was six months of sheer utter hell. No woman gets in a relationship for six months of sheer utter hell. There were warning signs at the beginning. Obviously, the warning signs were outweighed by the benefits. Well, they really weren't. Now we're just talking crazy because you want to destroy his image and destroy his character. Instead of pointing the camera where it needs to be on ourselves. Well, you know, I did some things too. It's like, I'm sure you did the majority of the things. And after your relationship with him, you start, might have started taking it a little more seriously. But the young females don't have the time for somebody to sit there and talk to them. And y'all all are all sitting up here dodging the point and dodging the heart of the issue with each other. Y'all need somebody who's going to stop you in your tracks and say, this is where you're wrong. This is where you're denying reality. This is where you're refusing to take accountability and not let you keep bird stepping and not let you keep talking. Because every time you keep talking, you're avoiding the truth. As soon as they get the truth, they start going into heart palpitations. And these young women, they used to have grandmamas who would stop them in their damn tracks. We used to have grandmothers who would stop you in your tracks and call you out on your bull crap point blank, up front, upright. We used to have that. We used to have women who called the other women out on their garbage. That was the reason that your girlfriends ended up with a new man. Because she knew what his woman wasn't saying and she kept it real. See, the only time that women really keep it real is when they want to snag a man. When they want to snag a man, all of a sudden they stop lying. Now, when they think they safe, when it's time to look at their track record, oh, you know, let me rewrite this real quick. But yeah, when they need to snag a man, oh, all of a sudden they keep it double real. And then you wonder why the young females can't get anywhere because the older females will not be honest. She's sitting here telling y'all that they giving you the real when she shows up. I just showed you. Oh, hell no, they're not. Hell no, they're not. Not at all. She's given some parts of it. See, that's the game that pearly things and the rest of them play. They pretend that they agree with us. This isn't about you agreeing. This is about you following. You can't teach. You're not qualified. Pearly things. You take a look at her life. She can't teach. Melanie King, take a look at her life. She can't teach. Then she wants to get together a panel of women, but they can't teach either. We got too many females out here with severe mental and emotional issues, and they want to lead the lead the, the choir. Then you wonder why the young women are so damn screwed up. The older women won't even tell them the truth of what they themselves have gone through. They won't tell their experiences and say, hey, baby, you got a good man. You need to stop all that being slick at the mouth. You got issues. You're scared of being alone. And because you're scared of being alone, you're a damn disciplinary problem and you become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you shut your damn pie hole and let that man lead... 
but you don't want to let him lead because you're trying to do some payback on your daddy. So you're going to vicariously beat up on your father through the men. And this is how you end up like these two dregs of society sitting on my screen right now. Well, I told you all exactly the way it was going to be. Let me tell y'all something right now. You're not going to like, some of the folk are not going to like when I say this, but let's be very, very clear right now. If you ended up with Pete Davidson, will somebody tell me how, how the hell of big of a difference is it to go from Kanye West to Pete Davidson? You acting like that's some big ass difference. Are you going to tell me that Pete Davidson is more mature, more intelligent, more socially astute, more accomplished, more serious, more disciplined? Tell me what it is that Pete Davidson has that Kanye doesn't. Hell, I can't even say not being bipolar. Can't even say that. Come on, this guy was dating her for a few months and then he goes and gets her kids, her and her kids' names etched on himself. You call that emotionally and mentally balanced? Where's the difference between him and Kanye? Where's the difference? What is the actual difference between the two when you stop other people sitting up here fabricating and embellishing the story? Where's the real difference? Where was the substantive difference between those two? So you divorce Kanye so you can get with Pete Davidson. What? Kanye was too crazy and immature and Pete ain't? And he's not. What do you want to do now? Let me see if I can talk to Usher. I'll be damned. Kanye, Pete, Usher, are you s- the m- and the men are the problem? And the, it's the men who are the problem. Well, I'm polite and ladylike and demure. Hello. But it's the men who are the problem. Welcome to the discount bin, ladies. Welcome to the discount bin. I warned you, I warned you, and now here you are. Welcome to the discount bin. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that it gets better. The problem is you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's going to get better from here on in. Long, sad, and ugly, and it didn't have to be. To the young women listening and the young men, to the young women and the young men, to the fellas listening right now, do not undervalue yourself. What you bring to a committed relationship is much more than the woman is going to bring. You're going to bring protection and provision. You're going to be upgrading her life. She's not going to be upgrading yours. She has a visceral, primal reaction, volatile reaction to the idea of upgrading you. You're going to be extending a lot more than she does. You better make some logical, strategic decisions. You don't throw that out there willy-nilly. You better make some logical, strategic decisions about who and what you are. And to the young ladies listening here, y'all better take a look at these chicks over the age of 35, 40, 45, 50. Y'all better take a look at them and look where they are. When they hit you with the, oh, I was Miss Polly Purebred, that's the warning sign right there. That's the red flag. When she's she's single over the age of 35, every red flag known to man is supposed to be waving. She didn't get single over the age of 35 by accident. She's over the age of 35 and single because she's a problem. Just because they were to get married doesn't mean they're not a problem anymore. Somebody else's problem, but for the rest of you, I'm just saying they're going to be listening to women who are camouflaging their issues. They're telling you half the story. And then the other women sit up here and believe half the story. No wonder they all just end up messed up. It's kind of like that thing about having, if you have three door locks, imagine if you, uh, I'm sorry, if you have six door locks on your door, if you had six deadbolts, imagine if you only lock three of them. If somebody tries to pick the lock, then basically they will be continually, perpetually, at least theoretically, always locking three of the locks. 
They're only halfway right, which means they're consistently going to be halfway wrong, which means they're always wrong. That means they're always wrong. But don't worry, Kim and Lala and all the rest of them, don't worry. Gonna be plenty of company on that red carpet with you next year. When you're back again, you'll have plenty of company. Because some of these supposedly young women who are sitting around out here bull jiving now, don't worry. They'll be coming to join these old chicks. They'll be coming to join you. Just like I predicted that they would. And you'll all be standing around these immaculately dressed wallflowers. A bunch of older women trying to rope in younger women so they can at least have some company on the wall. We're gonna go ahead and wrap things up here tonight, man. We've been on for four hours here. So all my long haul truckers, my night shift nurses, my warehouse workers, my self-employed people, my stay at home parents, we got you at least halfway through your shifts. So we're very glad to be able to do that tonight. If you are new here to the business, welcome to the program that all your favorite YouTubers are gonna be talking about here and ripping off. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we're here. If you haven't been to our patron, the link is in the description. We'll be doing it here tomorrow, 12 noon central time. You are all, of course, welcome to join us. Got a new feature I'm going to be rolling out here soon. I'll be giving them the updates on that tomorrow about how that's working out. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat, Venmo. Thank you very much. Big shout out to Famously Blacker. Big, big shout out to Famously Blacker. Uh, Bernie Cole here, uh, Black by Nature. Thank you very much for your support. Shawnee Blake, as always. Uh, and to everyone else out here, not you, Tina, not you. Uh, Mr. Dervin White, you like what I do? Thank you very much. I appreciate you supporting the program. We get a whole lot more done here than church. I want to thank all of you for joining us here tonight. And this concludes this broadcast of the business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your business will handle you.